Hello, welcome back to the Random Show episode number 97. Random Show episode number 97 with I, your host, Agostino Zinga. I hope you are doing well wherever this may find you. I hope you are doing swimmingly. That is a hope. Hope you are doing swimmingly wherever you may be. Hope you are doing swimmingly. What's the people saying now? What's the people saying right now? Are we here? Are we here? Yes, 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 we are live and direct. Pop in, pop out, pop in, pop out. Hear me when you hear me. I hope this is reaching you wherever you may be. I hope this is reaching you. This is the random show, it's number 97. Okay, so apologies for the lateness as per usual. You know how it is. Standard procedures and whatnot. You know, life gets the better of us, but we're here. We are here. We're queer and we're ready to rock and ready to roll many things to talk about many things to get into so make sure you got yourself a nice bottle of water or some sort of drink that you can kind of guzzle on because we're going to get silly we're going to get nice and silly out here nice and silly you know that's what we're going to do i actually need to make sure that i'm popping this and getting this ready actually let's make sure this is working oh nothing good nothing better then a good bunch of water. Do you know what I mean? But big up the chat. Big up everybody hanging in there. Um, big up all the doubters thinking I wouldn't make it. I'm here. You know what I mean? I may not be on time, but I'm always here. You know, when I put stuff out, you're never going to see me disappear. I always make sure that I turn up for everybody. I always make sure I turn up for everybody. But yeah, man. Many things to dive on into. As per usual with the show, you know what the vibes are. Loads of comedy talk and stuff, whatever it may be. Towards the end. If we have some time, we may have to check out Matt Rife's new comedy special. That um, good-looking kid who does all the crowd bits. I've heard some stuff online and I've been told that he's doing over an hour of flipping crowd work, which is insane. I always assumed crowd work was like what comedians do to sort of like gather intel to create bits or it was like part of an overall show. But I've never seen an hour special of somebody just standing on stage doing crowd work. It sounds absolutely brutal. But that Matt Rife kid did that. So I might have to check that out towards the end of the show. So um, if you don't like that, then I do understand if you will kind of duck out afterwards. But let's see what it's all about in it um, with that one. And then, of course, just the standard stuff that we talk about in terms of the comedy stuff we need to get on and some other bits and bobs I found. This time around, I'm deciding to use some clips I found on the Fire and the Kids server it. I can't put myself through watching another full episode of Fighting the Kid. I'm sure most of you guys will appreciate that. So I do apologize to the homeless cats for jacking some of these clips and using them on my live stream. But hopefully you guys are going to forgive me and you won't be too angry with me. But I can't sit there and watch another full episode of Fighting the Kid again, man. That thing is absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. But yeah, apart from that, nothing more to get into. Oh, by the way, do you guys like the new camera? Do you guys like the new camera? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know if you guys like the, like the new camera. Um, this is just my other iPhone. I think my iPhone 8 or 10 or something, one of them, that I've just used instead of my webcam. It seems to be working a lot better in low light because I don't have much light in this flipping room of mine. Um, and I'm not using a ring light or anything, but it seems to be working a lot better. You can see me a lot better this way. So maybe I might start using my phone as a camera instead of using a webcam. This looks pretty good, doesn't it? Um, but yeah. Let's jump in on the show. Nothing more to get in on. Nothing more of what to get in on. Um, let's go. So, have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen this? Um, this might be... No, no, Uche, this is actually different. This is a new camera. This is all new. This is all new HD sounds. <laughs> uh, Earth if you should make the, the Hitler book more prominent. Yeah. It's just a random... Like, honestly, I'm surprised the Hitler book triggers people as much as it should. Like, he's a historical figure. And that book is pretty dense in terms of, you know, explaining and sort of putting some context as to how horrible of a human being he was. It's not like a celebration. It's not like, it's not like flipping Adolf, you know, playbook, playboy book or something. I mean, it's not celebrating him. He's not spread across some toga sofa looking ripped and bronzed out. It's actually a cautionary tale, if anything. But anyway, um, what's, what's my chat? Why is my chat overlay not working? Oh, I hate when this... DDBDBD happens. Why is the chat overlay not working? For some reason, I've got no chat. Um, Let me see. Why is the chat overlay not working? My chat overlay has gone a bit goo goo gaga for some reason that I do not know about. 
so let me see if I can get this up again bear with me chat box hmm maybe that'll work refresh a little refresh bear with me one second as I try and see if this chat box works again um hopefully it works out hopefully it works yeah 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 it's a little it's a little drawer of the eyes you know what I mean it's a little drawer of the eyes um <laughs> it's one of those things where they say you know with images they say you, your your eyes move a certain way around the screen maybe having it up there kind of makes people go like ah, you know ah, he's got you crazy but anyway let's um let's move on with that one let me just double check and make sure all the chat things are oh there it is it's working now cool i just have to read oh that's what you got to do you don't even have to re-engineer it okay my bad you just have to re press refresh cache how dumb was I not to flip and realize that? It's a bit small, the text, but hopefully you can see that. It has come up, though. Let me see how it looks on my phone. Bloody hell, mate. You have to be an absolute ninja to read that. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's there. It's there, okay? It's there. <laughs> you have to be an absolute ninja to write to flip and see that. And if you get the joke, you get it. I'm not going to explain that one. Um, let me scroll down and see. Why is the font so small? Oh, okay, maybe because the font size is so small. That's probably why. Should I put it up? What should I put it to? Let me put the font size up to like, it's on 26. Let me see if I can put it up. Let me, let's, let's put it to 36. Let's see what it looks like on 36. All right, let's see 36. Let's see what that's saying. Maybe that font will be a bit madder. It's going to disappear and come back again. Let's see what 36 is saying. Instead of spending money on Ket, why don't you get a PC that doesn't lag? Say again, say again, say again, Yoga Flames. It's not lagging now. My computer's not lagging. It's pretty good now, I think. If it's lagging, let me know. I don't think it's lagging right now. Why is it so small on the screen? Hmm. Okay. Why does it look so small on the screen? It's it's 36 size here, I put it. Maybe, okay, maybe it's because it's that. Okay, let's put it clean then. Let's do... um. Let's change the flipping look of it. Let's go for chunky. Let's do chunky and let's do let's do the same size and chunky and see how that looks. Boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, big up. Thank you, Uche. Yes, at least somebody noticed. Okay, somebody noticed. I just you know a little bit of a change, but as you can see, the camera's got a little bit of a glare it's somewhere. There's a little bit of a shine because the camera lens is actually cracked. I need to actually repair it, but it does a better job than the way, than the webcam. Ooh, okay, there we go. Chunky probably works a little bit better, actually. Look at Chunky. Look at that, you see? Even the word Chunky came up looking nice. Yeah, there we go. Chunky in a 36 is quite nice. There we go. You see that Chunky? You see that? You see what we got there? We got a good bit of Chunky there. So big up the Chunky man, them. Big up everybody hanging in there. Nice bit of bold, nice bit of Chunky. So now you guys can see the chat, right? Is everybody happy now? You can see the chat, right? No more abuse in the flipping, in the flipping chat, right? No more abuse. No one flipping, questioning my flipping, drug buying tendencies and whatnot. Okay, there you go. Chunky's in the building. Chunky's in the building. Calm has been restored. Nobody's now shouting at me and screaming at me over there. Good to see. Thank you. Crisis averted. But yeah, look, look at the less, look at the, look at the, look at the lag. There's no lag today. Guess why there's no lag today? Because somebody, me, did a bit of YouTubing. Did a bit of research, right? A bit of planning ahead, using my little nugget, and I found the best settings to flip and use with this flipping old, old MacBook. And now it's working pretty well, isn't it? You see? No lag, no nothing. And I'm absolutely bending. I'm absolutely smiling. So I'm hoping I'm not going to jinx it, and we're just going to go straight into the show. Number one thing to go straight into the show to talk about, yo, this might be the best plastic surgery job I've ever seen in my entire life. The best plastic surgery job I've ever seen in my whole entire life okay you see this look at this let's put this over here actually look at this have you seen this i'm gonna take off the music of this crazy music but look how good this surgery is like she looks incredible now just incredible better but she looks way better now look at this look look at how big that snuzzer is that is a proper nose right look at that proper proper nose and now look look at the after look at this look at the after snap look at it she looks like a different person in the face look at that that is absolutely brilliant work man 
brilliant fucking work look at how clean that looks i wonder what they do do they cut off the bit here and then fold it back in like where's all that excess stuff gone or they just cut it off like what happens to all the extra stuff that was there before like where does that stuff go that's what i want to know like all this extra stuff where's that go or do they lift it up and then shave it? I don't really know what they do, but the job that they done on this young lady is absolutely phenomenal. Like it went, sorry, it went from that, right? Went from that to this. Look at that. That is pretty crazy. It's a shame though that people don't do this more often, like little tweaks. Because I think maybe it's just like a common practice. Maybe it's like, um, I'm trying to think of it. What's a good example? Maybe it's like, oh yeah that's it maybe it's like um a free membership at like a gym or something right usually they get you in on the gym with a free membership or with a trial because they know most likely no so you could know when you go to the gym new one they'll give you a trial like a couple of sessions or like a crossfit class and they'll tell you oh just leave your details here just in case so you put your de your cut your payment details down and then if you actually enjoy the class they'll just keep you know rolling the payment but they know most likely if they can get you signed up to a trial, then you're most likely going to stay. So that might be the same thing with surgery. Like once you get one thing done, it's really difficult not to see other things on your body or on your face that you don't like. And then you start going down this dark, dark, dark road. So very rarely do you see people actually getting just what they need. It's always, it's always excess. It's always too much. They start to kind of, you know, see these stuff pop up in the mirror and they just can't unsee it. And then they have to kind of address it. But I think, surgery would look way better if people actually got the the stuff that they actually needed to get done like the necessities like oh you know that's that's actually that'd make a, a real marked difference on how they look as opposed to getting everything done like cheeks eyes lips chin nose you know what i mean but i guess it's human nature and it's really difficult to get one job done and then just kind of be like okay i'm happy now and walk away you kind of always see the other stuff going but this is legitimately some of the best work i've ever seen online ever like this is crazy but I'm also a bit bummed because I think there is something quite beautiful about being wherever she is. She may be Middle Eastern or something. She may have Roman, you know, Romantic blood in her or something and get rid of this very distinctive nose, right? This kind of Julius Caesar, um, you know, kind of nose. I think it's kind of a, a bit of a shame and it's, it kind of takes away your uniqueness because in in reality, everybody, not everybody, but, you know, the majority of the beauty standards out there, the wide majority of them are based on this kind of Caucasian nose. Whereas this sort of like, you know, um, nose from the Middle East or wherever it may be is something that actually makes you look different. That's the wild bit about it. You actually look way more different and unique with this massive snozzer than you do with this little Michael Jackson thing. You feel me? But again, what do I know? Bless her anyway, regardless. Um, it's a crazy, crazy good job. And I'm sure she's probably happy and over the moon. And she's probably out in the town right now showing off her nose to all her new friends. Hey, girls, got the nose done, you know, really, really happy and shit. So big up her regardless. Big up her. Um, let's move on with that one. Then we got this, of course, I wanted to quickly touch upon this. Yo, Drake is an absolute savage, right? So that tune that Drake's got that he's releasing, that one that's got the flipping skit of Kim Kardashian talking at the Kardashian show. He's going to actually put it out. I think it should be out in a few hours or whatnot. And look at what the cover looks like. The cover image for this new track that he's meant to put out. It basically has Drake in a, in a, in a helmet with a girl that looks like it could be Kim. And then this account called Kuroku was able to find a post on Kim Kardashian's Instagram page where she was in a go-kart with the same sort of helmet look on as well. So is Drake playing psychological games? Is this just a coincidence? who bloody knows but one thing's for sure drake and kanye are not friends anymore that's one thing we know for certain those guys are not friends any bloody more it just keeps going on and on and on this beef will never bloody end man it's absolutely hilarious how much they despise each other i absolutely love it i really really do i never really get rid of this bar but yeah but drake is really on his flipping head top um kanye can't seem to really do nothing about it or whatever so i can't wait for when kanye decides to get back on social media because you know he's gonna go flipping crazy and you know basically go ham on kanye on drake once again but that track is due to be coming out very very soon so i guess we have to keep an eye out for it when it eventually does my friends 
Let's make sure this is where it should be. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Why is it kind of, is it, is it me or is it fading up a little bit? Hmm, don't know. But anyway, so yeah, that's that one. Let's move on from there. <laughs> Eddie, why does Drake want Kanye to murder him? That's the thing though. I, I think I've always been curious as to what the whole reason is behind it. But I think it's quite easy to figure out why they hate each other so much or why Drake hates Kanye. I think we've seen the worst of Kanye in public. But my belief has always been that Kanye has been like this for a while behind the scenes. And because he's so great and so talented and gave people so much value, his friends basically kind of protected him or kind of, you know, um, didn't speak about how he is behind closed doors. They kind of did their best to kind of like keep that to themselves. So I think he's always been like this. So I think he must have said or did something to Drake behind the scenes, apart from not clearing his record and giving his song to somebody else and the whole Pusha T drama with his son. I think Kanye was acting a certain way with him behind the scenes that made Drake kind of get turned off by him as a person. Because as well, you have to imagine, you have to remember, Drake is a huge Kanye fan. Like he looked up to Kanye. Kanye was one of his kind of rap idols. So I think it was one of those cases of he met his hero and he realized that his hero, or as Brendan would say, his hero wasn't who he kind of thought was in his head. You know, the whole premise of like, or the whole adage of never meeting your heroes kind of comes to play in that regard. And then, of course, in the process, Drake becomes the number one star in the world. Kanye's got his own insecurities that don't make sense. And then, of course, you know, that beef kind of escalates. But, and then also the other side of it that I also think is really important is that I think people forget that Virgil Abloh and Drake were really close. And now we know after the fact, RIP to Virgil Abloh, that Kanye and Virgil weren't on good terms for a while. So that whole entire time that Kanye and Flip, sorry, Drake and Virgil were hanging out, Virgil and Kanye weren't friends. So I can imagine in Kanye's head, he could probably think that Virgil was siding with his enemy, he didn't like that. And then I'm sure on Drake's side of things, he's probably hearing from Virgil or seeing with his own eyes how badly Kanye is treating one of his boys and he's probably thinking I would never do that sort of thing and he doesn't like it blah 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 so I basically think those things are what kind of played into it and that's what kind of led to the beef um but they you can tell they don't like each other for real for real there's a lot of like actual real hate there going on um maybe from Kanye's side it's more jealousy but from Drake's side you can definitely tell he doesn't fuck with um Kanye in the slightest so um that's one thing then I wanted to quickly talk about this. Um, happy to report and good news and flipping good riddance. The killers of XX Tentacion were sentenced to life in prison. Life in prisons for these absolute monsters who, you know, took away one of the greatest um, flipping, one of the greatest um, artists of his generation, unfortunately passed away because these flipping donuts um, decided to try and rob him out as he was coming outside of a flipping car dealership so it's good to see that they got life in prison mate i'm actually over the moon about that fuck these guys let's guess what this up there you go the jury of your peers having found you guilty of murder in the first degree with a firearm and having discharged that firearm and having that firearm discharge result in the death of jose Hansboy. this court will sentence you to life in Florida State Prison with Jesus. 1,732 days already served. As to count two for the robbery with a firearm, which was discharged, Jesus. and uh, causing death, this court will sentence you to life in Florida State Prison with 1,732 days already served. Both counts carry with them a 25 year minimum mandatory. 25 years minimum. Life in prison. God Almighty. Concurrent with count one. And both counts will run consecutive and not concurrent with your sentence in case number 1316428 CF 10A. The court cost cost prosecution will be reduced to a civil lien. You will have 30 days to appeal. As, as happy as I am that justice has been served, it's also a bit of a bummer. It goes without saying these young boys just threw away their entire lives for a robbery gone bad and it's such a flipping you know waste of life on both sides uh, it just I, anyway it, just, it always annoyed me seeing the footage of it like why didn't he just shoot the guy he had no weapon on him they could have easily took the flipping money off of him without without killing the guy in his car it just was so unnecessary 
and doing it in broad daylight as well just horrible like so many lives destroyed off the back of that but r.i.p existentiation hopefully his family will have some level of peace now the justice has been served but flipping now man like for, like life in prison 25 years mandatory and these guys are like probably what all under the age of 25 like they threw away their entire lives for what really for what absolute joke thing so i mentioned before on the stream that i was considering for a very long time to going away to turkey to get my teeth done right i kind of wanted to get a whole new set of what i call turkish delights so get a whole new road on the top and on the bottom of those massive you know la hollywood hip-hop flipping teeth that everyone has and i was debating it for a while I was thinking you know what as soon as i get into some actual money or i flip in save a bit up i'm gonna go over there and get it done and the whole plan was to go get it done and come back and just act like nothing happened right just go keep on keeping on like nothing happened already and just act like it was my normal regular teeth right but for some reason ever since it's been pointed out to me that people that have those teeth have this weird little lisp that they get or they have this whistle they have this weird whistle that they have whenever they get the teeth i don't know why the only exception i've seen is um little yatty and asap rocky i think little yatty said in an interview once that he spent maybe over 30 grand or something on his teeth but he got each one done individually and if i'm not mistaken he also got done the proper one where they actually give you they actually make like a improved no a new copy of your original teeth so they just get whatever your teeth looks like and they make a new copy whereas all these people who are getting veneers are basically getting really chunky you know off the shelf flipping chompers in their teeth and they're not really you know the same size as the teeth they got in their mouth so it looks a bit crazy so that's why maybe little yatties ones look good and it's maybe the same thing for asap rocky they've all got their done so i was considering it for a while but ever since someone pointed out to me that everyone's got a lisp and they got that weird whistle i can't unhear it and one good example of such a lisp and a whistle is one of my favorite rappers of all time an absolute legend cameron he's got this show called it is what it is that he does with mace and it's like a sports show and he's recently got his um teeth done cameron and legit right look at how his mouth moves and look at how his voice sounds and if you're a fan of cameron and you know what i mean you've listened to his albums you listen to his singles you see him on flipping you see him do freestyle and whatnot you know what his voice sounds like listen to what cameron sounds like when he's got this flipping teeth in his mouth yeah yeah listen man wow. how old is pat bev <laughs> yeah check that out listen this sound like pat bev might got a side joint <laughs> listen listen it sounds like Pat, but see, he's got a little s, 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 s. Do you hear that s? Let's do it again one more time. Uh, yeah, yeah, listen, <laughs> man. Wow. How old is Pat Bev? <laughs> yeah, check that out. Listen, this sounds like Pat Bev might got a side joint. <laughs> man, they look really good. Look, they look really good in his mouth. Don't get me wrong. No, you know, pause, as the New York rappers would say but the sound that emits out of it when he's speaking is wild st, st, st. he's 34 yeah listen 34 i still you still can bust a nut and go yeah. play it for 30 <laughs> it ain't like man so now i'm thinking to myself i probably should leave it alone i probably should opt for getting like invisalign and then just getting my flipping teeth bleached or cleaned get all the gunk taken out of it maybe go for some flipping gum contouring if i want that kind of you know get rid of the gummy smile and whatnot i could do that but i don't think i'm gonna go get my turkish delights i think i'm kind of got off the idea of getting turkish delights because i don't want to be lisping i talk too much to be lisping i do too many streams to be lisping i record too many podcasts to be lips lipsing like i would hate to hear my voice lipsing lisping not lips in lisp in it'll be too much i already bit you know i already kind of cringe at the sound of my own voice as it is anyway imagine flipping doing it that way i'm not really that kind of guy i can't so i'm gonna have to just chill out a bit and just relax it but you know ever since someone pointed out to me that these guys all have a lisp i can't unsee it now and now my life has been ruined for it and all the flipping dreams i had of being able to have flipping this hollywood hip-hop calabasa smile has disappeared unfortunately so big up um it is what it is big up cameron big up mace for 
um, you know, in a roundabout way, putting me off, getting those chompers put in my teeth. I'm sure it was probably the right decision in the end. I'm sure it was probably the right decision in the end. Um, going on from that, let's talk about this, right? Let's talk about this. Sometimes in life, a good indication, if you, especially if you're a young black man like myself, if you're a young black man like myself, a really good indication for you to kind of gauge how much of a hot boy you are, right? To gauge how much of a hot boy you are is for you to find out how the Caucasian ladies out there respond to you. That can sometimes be a better gauge of where your hot boy status kind of lies. And Lil TJ, right? New York's finest, found that recently. He's out there right now in flipping um, Sweden, chilling, having a good time. And he's realized now that sometimes a black man doesn't need the love of a black woman. He sometimes needs <laughs> the love and the appreciation of a white lady. Look at this. Oh, is it gonna play? Is it not gonna play? Oh, it's not gonna play. This is let's re refresh this one more. Sometimes just the love and appreciation of a white lady that really gets you, you know, feeling like, hey, I'm doing something. I finally arrived. Hopefully, this flipping loads. Let it load. Let it load. Let it load. Bear with me a second as it loads. Come on, computer, don't kill me now. It was working just well just a week ago. See, now it's like now it decided to like. I think what's his face? I think um that yoga person, Yoga Flames, put a little bit of juju on my laptop. Actually, it was working perfectly fine before, and all of a sudden, no bueno, no bueno. I think flipping Yoga Flames put some juju, put some flipping chat box juju on my flipping lap. I swear to God, because before it was working perfectly fine. Now look at it. Now look at it. Absolutely heinous absolutely heinous is it gonna be working now maybe it's not hmm it was perfectly fine just a week ago okay maybe not latinas then maybe maybe we don't need to see the latinas maybe latinas tell me now nah. are they not gonna happen it's not changing is it no it isn't come on son <laughs> okay well we're gonna have to move on from that one <laughs> the lover the the love of the Caucasian Swedish ladies is going to have to stop for another time. Anyway, moving on from that one, we have to talk about this. This is um, courtesy of TMZ regarding the unfortunate passing of Coolio. Unfortunately, it's been revealed now that he died from fentanyl. Did most people think that? Actually, let me take this off. It's getting too warm in here. Um, did, were many people aware that it was fentanyl that killed Coolio? I wasn't, to be honest, um, but it does make sense now, considering, you know, the amount of people that unfortunately have passed away indirectly because of it, like, so, so tragic. But it's courtesy of TMZ, it says, Coolio's death has been revealed, um, and it's one that continues to plague not only the entertainment industry, but the country at large. Um, Fentanyl, family spokesperson Jarrell Posey tells TMZ, Coolio's loved ones just got the news from the coroner, Fentanyl killed the rapper. Yo, he died ages ago, why did it take so long for them to get the report from the coroner? Is there maybe like a backlog or something going over there? Jesus, he died like, oh, oh my, oh my, going crazy. Didn't he die quite a while ago? Then he got the flipping report for him now. Anyway, I guess it doesn't really matter when you get it, as long as you get it, and that's probably the main thing. Um, it says here he also had traces of heroin and methamphetamine to his system. So most likely he was taking heroin, you would imagine. Not to speculate on his death, but you would imagine he was most likely taking heroin, and that was laced with fentanyl. But I have heard some people out there, there are some psychos out there who legitimately take fentanyl like straight to the face. They don't even, you know what I mean? They're not even taking it as a flipping chaser type of vibe. They're taking that straight to the face. So that might be the case too. I'm not really too sure. Uh, let me just quickly move this out of the way. Bear with me a second. Put the chat here. Yeah, so it continues on. It says, Jarez tells us investigators determined Coolio's severe asthma and decades-long use of cigarettes also played a factor in his death and his body's inability to fight back. That sounds like a little bit of propaganda. Not just sure. Um, despite the grim news, Jerez tells us that Coolio's kids, Brandy, Jackie, Milan, Christopher, Artis, Artis the Third, Darius, and Artisia, Artisha. Um, so remember their dad for the great man he was, and the public should know how much they loved him and how they conquered, how he conquered the world both on stage and off when he wasn't performing. 
We are told that Coolio's family has plans to honor their dad through documentaries and film and continue legacy in music. TMZ put the story that Coolio was found dead in his friend's house in Los Angeles in September. At the time, Jared told his paramedics suspected a cardiac arrest. So heroin laced with flipping fentanyl. Absolutely tragic, man. You hate to hear it, man. Really hate to hear it. Um, RIP flipping Coolio. Um, just because you like to party shouldn't mean that you should lose your life off the back of it. Um, we need to flip in, rid the world of the scourge of fentanyl and dealers flipping lacing drugs of it because it's so unfair. Um, it really, really is. People should know because it should be because I, I know there's some dealers out there who do tell their flipping buyers and customers that the stuff is laced with whatever it's laced with. But I think for the most part, most of them don't. But it would be great to get in a situation where we just rid ourselves of fentanyl in the first place. But I'm sure that's a lot easier said than done. But regardless, R.I.P. Coolio, absolute legend. This re revelation doesn't change his legacy or what he means to people. His music will live on. His music will live on. His music will live on. Then we have to talk about this. I thought this was flipping hilarious again, courtesy of TMZ. Kanye West is sued um, <laughs> for the Donda Academy for only feeding the kids there sushi. Imagine Kanye West, Donda Academy sued for only feeding the kids sushi. The horror, the absolute horror, right? How dare they only give them sushi? So Coach of TMZ says Kanye's private Christian school only feeds students one thing for lunch, sushi. And they apparently have to eat it on the floor without tables or chairs. This according to a new lawsuit. This is no wonder Kanye was looking so snatched then, right? No wonder he was looking so snatched, right? He was flipping intermittent fasting and only eating flipping sushi every single day. One meal a day, only eating sushi. No wonder he was able to fit into all those cool fashion clothes. I might have to flip and go on that diet also, I think. It goes, um, Ye and his Donda Academy are being sued by two black women who said that they were fined for teaching positions at the school for two reasons. Retaliation to a sound in the alarm on alleged education, health and safety code violations and for their race. So two black women got annoyed that Kanye was only feeding them sushi because what? They wanted rice or something. Is that what they wanted? They wanted some noodles. They wanted something substantial to add to it. They wanted a bit of bread <laughs> on the side of their sushi to eat with it. Come on, sisters, man. Leave brother, leave brother Kanye alone. It continues that according to a lawsuit obtained by TMZ, the women say that they were the only black teachers employed by Donda when they were hired full time early this year. How can you sue somebody from racism if they hire you and you're black? Doesn't make any sense, in it? A bit weird. Stop flipping. Um, what's that thing called? Stop prejudicing me based on the color of my skin, and also stop giving me money. Um, and they say that it didn't take long for them to notice numerous health and safety violations. Among the alleged issues, the woman say that only lunch option available to students is sushi every single day. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though eating sushi every single day does sound like a bit of a nightmare i'm not gonna lie as much as i love as much as i love shake shack as much as i love five five guys and all that stuff like eating that stuff or popeyes every single day could be a bit of a horror show among the issues the woman said the only lunch option was sushi every single day the students are not allowed to bring any outside food or drink except for water the suit claims kanye spends 10 grand a week on sushi that's actually a flex to be fair i was actually talking to somebody earlier today and i was saying my kind of goal in life i think overall is to not kind of move away from the uk for the most part maybe i'll go somewhere else in the uk maybe i'll go somewhere else outside london but i'd love to just have this to be my home base and to make enough in a month that i can kind of go and visit places randomly for the week and come back so once a week, go to like a cool little techno city party, come back and all that sort of malarkey. That'd be the great way to be. And then, you know, just have like a little, you know, two grand budget, five grand budget, right? That I just use to kind of spend and go and do my thing. That would be perfect. That's That to me is luxury. That to me is living lavish. So if Kanye actually loves sushi and that's his actual meal, being able to afford spending 10 grand a week on sushi is actually what people should be doing with their money. Right? That's what you should be doing. If you're rich and you're famous and you have the ability to do what you want, whether it's traveling, whether it's playing golf every day or playing just video games, you should just double down and do it. Whatever you love. You know what I mean, that's what you should actually double down and do. Not all this other frivolous stuff like buying Birkins or this nonsense that you don't care about. Like actually do the stuff that you enjoy. So I think this is an actual flex personally for me i don't see anything wrong with this in the slightest pulling up to your favorite sushi restaurant wearing some fucking amazing bits with your bad b chilling driving your little flipping maybach truck what more can life have it continues 
What's more, the teachers claim Kanye did not allow. <laughs> I hope this is real. I hope this is real. What's more, the teachers claim that Kanye did not allow crossword puzzles or coloring sheets at Dunder Academy. Classes could take place on the second floor because Kanye is afraid of stairs <laughs> and Ye didn't want children using forks or utensils. Kanye doesn't like crossword puzzles. <laughs> what's his beef with crossword puzzles i'd love to find out what he does at crossword puzzles and why he doesn't like coloring sheets i guess maybe the coloring sheets i can kind of get because kanye hates to be like put in boxes he hates to be you know what i mean he hates to kind of have lines around him so maybe the idea of a coloring sheet and you know paint by numbers that kind of stuff kind of drives him mad because someone's telling him where to paint um, he's not allowed to be free and creative and artistic and paint outside of the lines, outside of the box, all that sort of stuff. So that can make sense. But I'd love to know why Kanye did not allow crossword puzzles because that sounds really funny and really, really dumb. Uh, it also goes here. The suit, the suit alleges Kanye did not allow artwork to be hung on the walls and no one was allowed to wear jewelry simply because he did not like jewelry. The art on the walls I kind of get because if you're one of those kind of people that has like live, laugh, love on your flipping wall or I don't know, some funny little quote or something, then go fuck yourself. Either you put some actual art on the wall or you don't. But printing out flipping, you know, Tumblr and Instagram and flipping um, Pinterest sayings and placing them on your wall and thinking that's art is not good especially if you're a female because if you're a woman and you put those fingers in your wall and a guy comes back to your house he's he most likely thinks he's gonna get soppy toppy any lady's house you walk into that's got one of those flipping live laugh love things on the flipping wall you know you're gonna get into some freaky time so if you don't want to send out those messages please tear down your walls now of those flipping you know um phrases and whatnot because i promise you i promise you there's some freak nicks out there who are going to be looking at it and thinking it's a beckoning call it continues. The teachers even claim Kanye did not allow chairs, forcing teachers' children to sit on foam cushions or stand, while teachers were relegated to standing or using a stool. So, more teachers should actually stand, to be fair. I remember having teachers in my school who would get up from their chair. You'd see their flipping, you know, builders' bum and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, more teachers should probably stand up anyway. Um, Don the Academy suit says um, required everybody to wear all black from head to toe. As you can see in the class there, that's obvious. They all had to wear the flipping Gap Donda merch with foam runners. That's not too bad of an outfit. It's a little bit cultish, but I don't mind it, to be fair. A nice relaxed t-shirt. You've all got the same stuff on, so there's no bullying, right? It's all uniform stuff, so that kind of gets rid of that. There's no rich or poor when you're wearing these sort of garments. Same shoes, really comfortable and whatnot. You can wear them with socks or without socks. Let your feet breathe. Nothing wrong with this. I kind of like it. The teachers claimed that the school doors were physically locked from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay now it's getting a bit spooky from the outside during the school day and students weren't allowed to go outside until they went home with the entire school pre-kindergarten through 12th grade taking lunch and recess at the same time <laughs> and they've got this random picture of who who's this guy isn't that um isn't that one of the flipping um singers they've got a random picture of one of those singer guys i forgot his name um eating sushi on a boat somewhere it looks flipping either it's a boat or some sort of um villa that looks out onto a flipping sea that's flipping beautiful though jonas brothers right it's one of the jonas brothers they got a round picture of him on there, the team's the article um the suit claims donda academy didn't didn't ha have a janitor or a school nurse and there was no trash cans um outside the classrooms or in the kitchen I mean what so what do they do with trash then kind of doesn't believe in trash Meanwhile, they say students with medication were stored in the closet with other expired medication just scattered around unsecured. Yeah, Kanye for sure doesn't believe in medication either. That's for sure. He does not believe in medication. And get this, the teachers claimed that there was no lessons planned or proper disciplinary procedures in place, resulting in students being undisciplined for multiple instances and bullying um, and bullying assaults against peers and teachers. The teachers claimed that they would try to run the the issues up the flagpole and they were threatened not to reach out to kanye of course you shouldn't man why are you reaching out to kanye don't be a knock take care of it yourself the woman said that they were ultimately fired and they were blaming the termination of retaliation of racial discrimination they also claimed that their paychecks were not up were short of two thousand seven hundred per day so they're suing kind don academy for money man these women are bugging out they went to flipping the donder academy and thought they were going to a hsbcu or something the guy's running you out of a flipping tent out of a porter cabin 
out of some abandoned offices. What did you expect there to happen? Come on, man. These women need to chill out. Aunties need to chill. These aunties need to flip and chill, honestly. Aunties need to chill, relax. Let flipping Kanye run his school with sushi only. I'd go there. It's a school that you get snatched at. Yeah, you get snatched. You get some buccal fat in your cheek because you're only eating sushi. Nice, healthy diet. You get to wear some cool garments. You don't get disciplined. There's no spanking, no shouting, no detention. It sounds like heaven to me. Sounds like heaven to me. I'm not going to lie. It sounds like heaven to me. I don't see what people are complaining about. It sounds like a fucking perfect school. I'll be all over that. Anyway, moving on, moving on. So moving on, we do that. Okay, let's talk about this. So I saw this randomly, right? Um... Ba, 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 ba. I saw this. Look at this. This is courtesy of Fox News. A report on flipping Joe Rogan's new comedy club. This looks pretty cool, isn't it? Joe Rogan's new Rogan. So, is Joe Rogan's comedy mothership good for comedy? Attendees weigh in. All right? Pretty cool little article here. Fox News covering Rogan. That's how you know Rogan's kind of crossed over into the dark realms. But yeah, let's see what the attendees that go into Rogan's comedy club, courtesy of Fox News, have to say about this. Texas. Ooh, it lights up LEDs. Is Joe Rogan's new anti woke? Why are they calling it anti woke? Because I guess is he is he anti woke? Does he even does Joe Rogan talk much about woke? Does Joe Rogan talk much about comedy cancel culture? Does he talk much about comedy? No way. I would have never guessed it. Oh, it's fantastic for comedy. Uh, most definitely. Oh, I think it's great for comedy. White yes, people, white people. No. I think white uh, people. if you like comedy and you don't take it too seriously, I think uh, wherever you have comedy, it, it's got to be a good thing. Yeah, I think it would be good to white get people. a new crowd for comedy. I mean, comedy's been up against the ropes. Hey, yo, Austin might be the whitest state I've seen in my entire life in America, isn't it? God damn it, man. Get some multiculturalism going on there. Get some juju jazz. Where do people go for flipping good Asian food in flipping Austin? Jesus, or does that even exist? <laughs> uh, you know, comedy was starting to, to hit that point of, you know, cancel culture really leaking in and having people be very, you know, skittish on what they're willing to talk about. And then, you know, adding the pandemic on top of that, right? Where Yo, this you is geeked. Yo, he is. Ge I knew it. I've been out. I've been out too much in my life. I've done too many substances over my life to recognize when somebody's geeked this nigga is geeked he is absolutely geeked off of his eyeballs and you can see look at how big those flipping flipping eyeballs are <laughs> look at my guy yeah 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 comedy is completely strangled and there's nowhere to even perform um so this is this is perfect for comedy this is exactly the resurgence that comedy needs and frankly this place is going to be home base for comedy going forward this is going to be the new home for comedy in america not just here in austin i'm not gonna lie he got me kind of hyped i kind of want to go but people what's the what's the better place to go as a first time as a first timer will it be dallas or will it be austin what's the first as a first timer to go what's the no actually houston dallas or austin was it where where where's the as a first time because I'd like to go to Texas just to kind of see Austin okay Austin definitely def the Austin Austin okay everyone's saying Austin I think that might be has to be on my list to go next okay people are saying not Dallas Dallas sucks okay cool awesome awesome Dallas and Houston are not walkable okay cool ah interesting so I need a car and I don't have a license obviously because I'm from the UK and I'm a loser. So yeah, that's interesting. I I would need somewhere I can get around easily in the flipping in a you know walking or in Ubers and shit. Austin, then San Antonio. Okay, nice. Thank you, E. All right, cool. I'm on it, man. I'm on it. I think the the, the Austin thing I'm gonna try and make happen this year. I don't know when, but I'm definitely gonna try and make it happen so I can definitely go and see a show at the flipping comedy mothership and just see what the vibe is like in it. Film a video of myself on Sixth Street. Is that Sixth Street place in Austin? It is. Right? I think I asked this before. The one where everyone fights. Is that is that in Austin? I'd love to go there and see it for myself. Get into a little scrap. Huh? <laughs> get arrested, get a mugshot. Ah, that would be so fun. <laughs> I can't wait. I feel like being in like an urban city like this and such a popular city that it will only do good. 
I think that uh, comedians, it's you know, moments of levity where people can kind of engage and, and, and realize we all have differences and there's nothing wrong with that. We can celebrate our differences and celebrate our different cultures and you know, not be uh, afraid to kind of joke about what, what makes everyone unique in that way. And I think that's positive and comedians shine a light on that. And we should encourage that. And, and instead of the, what's happening right now, it's, it's diminishing that or trying to silence the silly. It can be offensive sometimes, like what he says. Some people can't take that, but at the same time, he's not targeting that crowd of people. There's so much uh, uh, darkness in the world. Um, have a bit of fun. You know, don't take it too seriously. Don't be offended by it. Oh, English guy. It sounds like an English guy has moved over to Austin. I, I, I can hear an English accent from a mile away. I'm most excited for the future. I think that's what... My guy is geeked. Look at those flipping pupils. Look at this. My guy is geeked. This really is. This is just the opening week of something that's going to be a long-standing staple. Not just here in Austin, but in comedy as a whole. I mean, it, this is going to be right up there with the Comedy Cellar in New York in terms of iconic places for this art form. Uh, it's going to bring a lot of people to six. So uh, my friends and I, we all work. Oh, some goth itches out there, eh? You know, Aggie loves a loves loves a loves a little goth itch. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. So goth itches. You know, I might have to roll down in Austin, eh? Hello, goth itch. I like Sepultura too. Yeah, I love Slipknot. I'm a big fan. You love a download festival. Oh. <laughs> it's on here, so that's good news for us. What I'm most excited for is to have a good time for not just a bar scenario, not just a party scene, but also just like a chill, relaxed, different kind of scene that Austin doesn't really have yet. I, I lived in New York, Los Angeles for a long time. I think it's exciting to have a comedy club where you, you, you might have surprise guests. You know, some of these clubs in LA and New York, they're, they're known for comedians who come to pre preview new material. You can tell this guy's a real fan. He's a real comedy fan, a real Rogan fan, because he's been auto auto the the hot, the, the, you know, the places for comedy like LA, New York. He's traveled around. He's gone to see people play. So, you know, this is pretty cool, man. This is pretty cool. Good little community people hanging out there. And they'll, they'll come unannounced. I'm hoping that Austin gets a little of that as well. Be nice to have. What? James Banks rooting for a gas leak. <laughs> Why are you so mean? You want to, you want them to have a gas leak at the comedy flipping mothership? How dare you say that, man? It's the home of comedy, the sanctuary for all anti woke flipping comedians. It's a safe haven for them. No counterculture should pass through these doors. That's Little Rogan's flipping house. How dare you say that, James Banks? <laughs> Rooting for a gas leak. <laughs> it's so mean. Holy shit have some big names come in and kind of surprise us from time to time and really bring you know a big comedy element to the central coast i guess it's kind of cool to have it here because i mean like i said it brings in a lot like different kinds of people but at the same time it could cause probably a lot of controversy like maybe people don't want to hear so maybe it gives austin a bad rep but maybe it also brings in a good rep for austin from people who do like you up hey make your mind up maybe this maybe that why don't you make your mind up and make your point hey eh? come on now lady make your bloody mind up stop sitting on the fence Joe rogan okay anyway she ended it but yeah cool <laughs> i'm down i'm i'm down man that sounds that sounds fun that looks like fun i'm on it like sonic austin vibes couple of goth itches to kind of show me around and whatnot couple of you know racks of barbecue couple of caucasian lads to show me how to flip in what's that what's that dance you guys call when you what's that flipping white salsa what's that american salsa called with your cowboys in line dancing right your little line dancing shit i'll take part in that eh? get me some cuban heels huh Drink me some Paps Blue, some Paps Blue Ribbon. Is that good beer or not? I'm not too sure, but I'm down, man. I'm definitely, I'm definitely, definitely, definitely want to come out there. Oh, what's that going to do here? Uh, <laughs> what's that going to do? Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move on from that one. Let's go here. Before you get oh, on the plane, Frostin. Please don't forget your Balenciaga ballot flats for Fight Club night. <laughs> also, no K T before plane. 
big up oh hold on sorry big up a richie i think that was richie hold on, let me get that again <laughs> hold on let me get that again i think because i um covered it with the flipping why is it not here oh that's where it is the alert box is over there whoopsie let's play that one more time apologies for your ears let's play that one more time so i can see it Before you get on the plane for Austin, please don't forget your Balenciaga ballot flats for Fight Club night. Also, no K T before plane. <laughs> if you got Richie, you're not gonna let me forget about those Balenciaga ballet flats, are you? Right, those ballerina flats. You're not gonna let me forget about them. Imagine I pull up to Austin wearing those Balenciaga ballet flats, right? One of the only black guys in the city that day. Walking down 6th Street with the Blenshaga Ballet Flats. Excuse me, guys. Do you guys happen to know where the comedy mothership is? Oh. <laughs> Just getting slapped up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just imagine. Sorry, lads. Can, can I trouble you for a second? I'm looking for the mothership. Oh, it would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But big up, Richie. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much, fam. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on from that one. Um, Let's see this. Let's see this. Let's see this. Oh, let's see this. Do know from No Jumper, formerly of No Jumper, now of Fig Munity, and now of this new show they have now called... You Should Be Ashamed of Something. I forgot what it's called anyway. Um, He has a little clip, little clip here, courtesy of their channel where he allegedly goes off on Joe Budden because of that complex um, hip-hop media power rankings list. I haven't seen this. I want to see what he's going to say about Joe Budden, how he's going to go off and defend him. Let's see how flagrant and how crazy he gets here. Maybe this is the start of some new hip-hop podcasting wars and beef. We love a bit of that. Good for the metrics, good for the analytics, and good for the virality. Let's see what he has to say. I'm a yeah, beat yo. Yo. I just I'm not seeing your names. I see some of you say that when I said we are number one that I was throwing shots, I never heard of half of you. It's not mm. true. And on top of that, I hear some of you saying that I brought Joe, I watched a video where I brought Joe to the uh, live streaming world and I'm not trying to take nothing from nobody, but I appreciate it. I see you guys. You guys were number you guys were first there first and you got your numbers up. Hold on, six. We got the gun sounds right now. We ain't got it. We ain't got the gun hit, sounds. Hit, hit something on there. Hit something. Quiz flip you whole ass nigga. <laughs> shame on you about to Small be number one, bitch. Bang on bang on number one. Shame, shame on you about to be number one, nigga. We here to complete. Yeah, bitch, you got a muffin top, bitch. Yeah, nigga, we hitting on our shit, nigga. You got a muffin top. We gonna fuck you up when you come to the West Coast. Quiz flip, nigga. We we like to be the 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 hey, hit the hit the shit with you hit cut. The bird? I think you hit the bird over there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, look. But I hit I hit You I gotta hit. update that motherfucker. Hey, man. but uh, but Shot a queen slip though. But uh, but nah, I, I, I definitely he he tapped in, he when I told him I'll come in peace. He was like for sure. I, I was like when we in New York, whatever, let's do some shit. He like, whatever, it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then um, Ice, I think, you know what I'm saying? Ice, shout ice, my nigga Ice. Ice, ice swallowed me too. It said the same thing, you feel me? So it's all love, man. I like that shit. You know, niggas tapping in the whole little shit. I come in peace, I swear to God, I do. Oh, you come and in peace now, huh, Yeah, bitch. I come in peace, nah. you know what I'm saying? Nah, I fuck that no, damn smack, blood, smack right bitch. Right. No, Queen West Smith. Coast, yeah. motherfucker! Hey, hey, <laughs> big up, CSOB. Big up, big up. Thank you for hanging in with the kid. You know how it is. Hey, 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 West Coast, hey, West Side, hey, 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 West Side hey. till we die. Hey, bitch, hey, this Tupac around this motherfucker, yeah. bitch. All that soft talking over there. Hey, yeah, to today new hip hop. We give a fuck about none of that. <laughs> this a West Coast, bitch. That throw, motherfucker. Well, hit, the, hit the motherfucker. And if thing, you got see? an issue, get out, pun, bitch. Yeah, get out, pun. <laughs> yeah, Ace Boy Chase gonna fuck all of y'all up. Put it back there, sleep Especially with you, his queen. Ass. Fake ass, ass beard. Fat sleep. Well, speaking of sleep, Delta Munch, yeah. 100% <laughs> legal cannabis shipped straight to your door. All vapes, edibles, and pre-rolls can be bought online and shipped nationwide. Well, well, that was fun and entertaining. I have no idea what's going on there. Don't know why I played it. Please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> A 
hey, hey, sometimes you play some stuff and you don't know why you played it. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> let's move on from that one. Swiftly, swiftly moving on. So, um, it looks like our guy Brendan Shaw decided to do a very impromptu very very impromptu um q a session with these fans which i'm not too mad at to be honest i see some people on the final kiss subreddit taking the piss out of him and poking him and stuff about it and laughing at him about it but i actually think this is a good thing because i kind of have long said that i feel like brendan for whatever reason doesn't really appreciate his fans enough and maybe because the hate is really really loud and there's a lot of people like over a hundred thousand flipping what's it face um over a hundred thousand um cats on the subreddit and whatnot so clearly if you've got that many people out there flipping not liking you it's hard not to flip and pay them some attention but i think ultimately he has a lot of fans out there who are sustaining his lifestyle and loving what he does he should also give them some love also and kind of communicate with them that whole thing he says about i don't read comments i just post and ghost it's a thing that he says to kind of make himself feel good because of the haters but if anything it's kind of disrespectful to the fans it kind of dismisses the fans how about if your fans want to talk to you how about if they want to hit you up and let you know how much you mean to them and stuff you're saying i don't read anything i don't read anything i don't read comments it's a little bit dismissive i don't like it so i wasn't too mad at this when i saw this this is courtesy of the thick boy channel get us up on the screen you can see that right yep courtesy of the thick boy channel um as you can see here he's got this new questionnaire thing that he did the views aren't the greatest for him because only because the channel's got 161,000 flipping subscribers, which I don't know how they managed to get that many subscribers so quickly. That's pretty crazy. So I've got a feeling this might be botted and this might be bought because it feels like he only launched Freak Boy the other day and they don't put much original content on there apart from the fight companions. How they got that there so quickly is crazy, but still, congrats. And then he just uploaded this um, Q&A session now. And at the time of speaking, it is only at 6.1 thousand views, which isn't the greatest if you think about a 106, was that 16 or 60? 160 plus flipping 100,000 um, subscriber count. It's not the greatest. So anyway, let's watch it anyway. Let's see what he says in his Q&A and how he interacts with his fans. I'm sure Chin Su Yi, um, the flipping serial killer in chief, decided to flipping go through all the questions and vet them before. So this is not done off the top with people just sending in questions via the chat. This is definitely done a little bit crazy way. But um you know regardless it's good to hear him communicating with his fan base regardless it's good to hear him playing and communicate with them regardless Oh yeah, by the way, I didn't tell you last time, guys, when I was streaming, but did I say, did I mention it before when I had it? I had to chuck away that bottle of rain that I bought. That power, that, honestly, I hope they never reach out to me for a sponsorship. Please, God, do not please reach out to me. But it doesn't bite me in the ass. But Jesus Christ, that rain flipping um, energy drink is absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. I don't know how this guy drink, and he get don't get me wrong, he gets sponsored by them, but he also looks like he enjoys it. He drinks those things. He's actually gulping them down when he's when he's recording his shows. I don't know how he drinks those things and likes the taste of it. It tasted like absolute. It was so rancid. I hated it, everything about it, and it was really gassy and stuff, and made me burp a lot. I had to throw it away, and it's not the cheapest here in the UK. I think it was like one fifty or something for the can, or or two pound or something. Like I don't know how he drinks that stuff daily. Um, and actually enjoys the taste of it. Rain is terrible, man. No, thank you. What's up, guys? We asked for some questions regarding the fight world, and you sent them, so your boy's going to answer them. The team here at Thick Boy Studios picked out some of their favorite questions, so let's jump right in. Looking hella dark, isn't it? I look hella light and washed out. He looks hella dark, and, you know, he looks like he's, in a, he's filming this on a set of Gotham or something. The man at Ichikon89, I-C-H-A-C-O-N-89. What's popping, Daddy? Uh, what would be the next super fight you would like to see in the UFC? For example, Volkanovski versus Islam. Good question. Um, I mean, I guess it's a super fight. I think it's, and I, when I say this, this is, you know, the big UFC 287 is Saturday. Pierre and Izzy's happening. No moisturizer. 
no cold water in the face. Like, he looks horrendous, man. I'm not sure if it's the camera or whatnot, or just the lighting, or the lack of color grading or whatnot. I don't know what is going on there, but Brendan looks disaster in the face. What the fuck is going on, my guy? And I'm one of the rare people that actually believe Brendan was handsome before. I know some people in the subreddit don't agree and think he always looked a little bit like a dolphin, but I legitimately think he was a good-looking guy beforehand, like legitimately good-looking guy. I actually need to get some pictures up of the kid. Let's see here. Let's do this. Let's not go into Instagram. Let's just write his name. Um, I'm sure old pictures of him. He looks really. He looks. He looked really handsome, and now, god damn it, guy. Yeah, he looks awful. Like even these pictures, even this one. He looks really good looking here, I think, personally. He looks great there, right? Like, what happened to the guy, bro? I know he's looking upwards a little bit, but Jesus, like even there, look how great he looks here. He looks really good there too, I think. This is definitely when Rogan said, "Ah, oh, everyone hates everyone hates Brendan because he looks like an Adonis and he could take your girl and he could beat you up." This version of him probably but the version we're seeing now, where is it? Where's that? Where's this version we're seeing now? Probably not. I don't think anybody is worried or scared about this guy here taking your girl. If this guy here takes your girl, she was never for you. She was for the streets or the comedy streets, right? Or whatever it may be. But this guy, fair enough. You have to kind of take it on the chin. And it's flipping. It's, it's a sad, like I say it all the time. Like as much as I cover the guy, it's also good to take lessons and to kind of take some, you know, something from this from yourself that you kind of apply and the thing that i've applied of it is definitely sacking off the booze and the gear and kind of leaving it to the weekends when i do want to get a bit larry and get a bit cheeky but for the most part i've sacked it all off because this man has deteriorated so much over you know a short space of time i know this is a long time ago when he's in the ufc but look at that dude compared to that dude jesus christos like wow sad to see to be fair but anyway let's continue Thing. So I think this happens regardless whether it's a, you consider it a super fight or not. But Alex Piera at light heavyweight <laughs> against Jamal Hill is Al a Alex Piera. Piera. He says like P. Piera. Alex Pereira. Piera. A fight that they can take all my money. I think it's only a matter of time. No matter what happens, win, lose, or draw, um, I think Piera's. Draw. Draw matter of time no matter what happens win lose or draw um i think piero's future is at light heavyweight he's too big for 85 especially as he's getting older and i think his future is at light heavyweight which i think he will have the same success that he has at middleweight i think there's better matchups for him at light heavyweight more strikers not so many heavy uh grapplers because you look at middleweight if you were to win on saturday against izzy the rest of that division is not a great matchup for him you know, and if he's going to stay at 85 and defend his title, if he was going to win on Saturday and defend his title, uh, he's probably looking at a Hamzat fight next, which is stylistically a complete nightmare for him. So um, I think that would be considered a super fight, depending how you uh, define super. Um, but Alex <laughs> Pierre up, up at light. Define bullying. Define baddies and addies. <laughs> define drawl. <laughs> Define murderer. Yeah. Define narrative. <laughs> Define super fight. Love this guy. Heavyweight against uh, the champion Jamal Hill to me would be a pretty cool super fight. So hopefully that answered your question. Ichikan. What else you got? At Michael Friedman 1221. If Masvidal, Jorge Masvidal wins, do you see him ever rematching Colby Covington? I don't think so. Well, my initial response is absolutely not. But they do have that weird beef, right? Where there's the you know he press he's going to press charges against him. That went away. Um, man, that's a good question. I don't think. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. My again, my initial response is absolutely not. Uh, you hear Masvidal talks, you know, about how this is probably his last one, especially here to lose. Whenever you hear a guy talking about this, is my last one, you know, he's one foot in, one foot out. And I know for a fact, Masvidal has a lot going on outside the octagon. So I, I just don't see him fighting a guy in Kobe Covington. Co Covington has a lot of work to do now, especially that Kamar Usman is kind of on his last leg. I think Kamar has maybe one more. Um, so I think for Kobe, um, 
I don't I don't think you'd entertain that because it wasn't very competitive the first time they fought. So I don't see the UFC doing that either. So I don't think so. I don't think so. What else you got? At Razashani ten. That's R A M Z I S H A H. Sounds like one of the bots that used to buy views. E E N ten. If Michael Chandler beats Conor McGregor, do you think it's done for McGregor, or can he find a way to come back from that? Uh, not done. I, don't, I think McGregor's one of those guys that'll never be done. He, his star is so bright no matter what happens. Look at all the stuff that's happened outside of uh, the octagon. He's still a force to be reckoned with as far as the fans are concerned. He has his loyal fan base, and they're massive. They're massive. You're looking at one. You know, the guy can do no wrong in my book. Sometimes he makes it tough to cheer for him, but... Uh, you know, with his history and what he's done for this game, I don't think that fan base is ever going to go away. But And what, what is he wearing? Is that like a t-shirt with a hood underneath? Like, I've just figured this out. He's got like a tweed dad hat on, a tweed camp cat that makes his head look awful. Then he's got a hoodie, a short sleeve, or maybe it's a vest because you can see the fold here. It's like a vest hoodie under a t-shirt such question that where do you where did like has america got the the number one stock Amer american latvia has the most stock of flipping sleeveless hoodies i've ever seen in my entire life why would you ever need a hoodie without sleeves on it the whole point of having a hoodie is that it's like a jumper it's like a warm blanket like a little like a like a yeah like a warm blanket that you put on yourself that you can put a hood on as well you can cover your ears cover your head if you're feeling cold cover your head if it rains and shit Right, you can be a bit incognito, be in your Kanye West shit. Why would you want to have a hoodie without sleeves on it? It's such a bizarre combo. I never understood that. A sleeveless hoodie that you put under a t-shirt. Hmm. Um, if you were to get like dominated by Michael Chandler, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be really tough for him to to get back in there. Um. There are a few guys where if you were to just get Molly Watt by Michael Chandler, what he could jump in there with. Uh, I could see a Tony Ferguson. A, a fight like that makes a lot of sense. This nigga can't, can't pronounce Ferguson. Been there with. Uh, I, I could see a Tony Ferguson. A, a fight. Ferguson? Say that again? Chandler, what he could jump in there with. Uh, I, I could see a Tony Ferguson. A, a fight like that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys who are kind of on the back nine of the career. Something like that. A legendary fight. Not to mention, you know, you didn't uh, put Kenny find his way back from that. In regards to the UFC, it'd be really tough. I do think the Tony Ferguson, Tony Ferguson fight makes a lot of sense no matter what. Why does he recall these things so early in the morning when he's clearly not a morning person? Can somebody tell me? Clearly he's not a morning person. It's not for everybody. I love mornings. I love afternoons. I love evenings. I like all parts of the day. But some people can't function in the morning without a coffee, without some breakfast, without getting some sun in their face, a bit of wind in their face, a cold breeze, going for a walk, taking their dog out for a walk, to, whatever. Some people just need that little bit of a couple of extra hours in the morning to get going. Why do you just do that and then record? Why roll straight out of bed and then sit right in front of a camera? I don't understand that logic because it, it definitely is, I've always, it goes without saying, I always think that the Shorb Show is definitely the worst version of Brendan. It's the worst show he's got in his catalogue of shows, actually. And it kind of doesn't, you know, show him in his best light. Why are you doing this? I don't understand this. Like, what are we doing here? Uh, win, lose, or draw there. But um, can he bounce back from that? Outside of the UFC, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of big name boxing that can be um, available for Conor McGregor outside the UFC. You know, no matter if his nuts are hanging down to his ankles, I think people are going to pay to see him fight a Jake Paul, a KSI. Listen, I get it. Yeah, fresh water, baddie. No, you're right. You have to you have to work around your family, but just because he takes his kids to school in the morning doesn't mean he has to go straight and record. He could take his kids in the morning with, you know, some sleep in his eye, go back home, have a coffee, get a little run in or something to wake up and then go and record. He doesn't need to go straight there. He can still, you know, there's still time in between him recording and going to pick up the kids up from school where you can flipping, you know, chill and get get kind of somewhat awake to kind of make sure that he's firing cognitively. Because at the moment, he just sounds drunk, half asleep, hungover. I'm not really too sure.
You guys are like, what? I know. There's a lane for it. It is what it is. But he can take some of those. You know, the Nate Diaz trilogy fight uh, is always just this kind of uh, mythical creature just looming out there for him whenever him and Nate Diaz decide to get together. I do think that fight happens, but I think it's between their two promotions or under a different banner, not the UFC. And it's probably going to be boxing. At Nevin194, what would do more pay-per-view buys? So here we go. What would do more pay-per-view buys? Leon Edwards versus Masvidal or Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Edwards and Masvidal, there's a good story there, right? With the, was it the two pieces and a soda? So there's that. That ship's kind of sailed, right? Is anybody really talking about that? Not really, but we did. They could build it up there. Um, Edwards Masvidal is. Listen, if Masvidal were to, if it looks great against Gilbert Burns, there would definitely be some hype there. Um, Covington's had a long time off, but he's a fan favorite. Um, again, fan favorite, also fan hated. So you know he's a he's a compelling guy. It's two different things, right? Because Masvidal's kind of on his, like we've said, you know, he's kind of on his way out. Hey, Brendan, get more entertaining, bro. This show is boring. Maybe get more snappy with the questions also, brother. Big up Angel Rago. I think deep down Brendan knows he is a fraud, so he's afraid to read comments and self-medicates with nicotine and alcohol. Ooh. Thank you, Angel Rago, for the $12.34 um, donation. Appreciate you, my friend. That's actually a really good um guess and a really good theory that you put out there to be fair i'm not mad at that one i'm not mad at it whatsoever because as much as i love to flip and rag on a guy let's let's be real it must be pretty difficult to be brendan even if you do bring it upon yourself even if you are a narcissist even if you know you were given all the advantages in the world and you fucked them up and stuff and you're you know maybe a terrible person and whatnot put that to one side the actual you know um hate and vitriol and mockery he now gets from his fans from detractors from comedians behind his back in front of his back it's all flipping crazy right in front of his face sorry it can be a little bit too much i can definitely definitely understand it but um i don't know day to day must be crazy for him like day to day just think about what it was to be like for him day to day it must be pretty nuts so I do think it makes sense to maybe medicate yourself with some booze and alcohol, you know? Um, what's Richie? Richie, AZ screen resolution blurry. What screen? My camera screen or the actual thing that's on the screen, the, the video? Because if it's my camera screen, it's because the camera's... A, I'm using my iPhone and the, the camera lens is a bit cracked. So that's why maybe you've got that flare going on. It's not actually blurry. It's just a flare. If I switch it to the other one, you'll see it's a, bit, it's a lot clearer. When it's here, it's a lot clearer. But when it's there, it looks a bit crazy. But it's not, it's not the actual screen. It's just a flare. It's the flare here. There's a bit of a, as you can see in my finger there, there's a bit of a thing, you know? Look at my finger, actually. I look a little bit white here when I put my finger there, don't I? All right. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's go, let's go. Covington now, I think Covington, the work now begins for Covington. Like now that Usman's out of the picture, the one guy, his one Achilles heel, I think Covington beats everybody else. I think he's the, he, how you say the one guy. His, how do you say Achilles? One Achilles heel. Achilles. I think Covington beats everybody else. I think he's the best welterweight on the planet, not named Kamaru Usman, especially in his prime. So uh, I think uh, more pay-per-view by it doesn't mean it's, you know, it's, it doesn't mean the, the hardcores or the purest of the sport um, are going to make it a bigger pay-per-view. For the purest of the sport, it's Edwards Covington, right? Because Covington, even though he's had a year off, he's definitely a top three guy. I'm not trying to, but my bodybuilding news, I'm not trying to flip in to test this. I'm doing 720p. I want to keep this computer running and ticking over. It's ticking over nicely. I'm currently on 10% um, CPU usage. I'm just playing it safe. I don't want to test it too far. I don't want to go for flipping 1080p and blow this stuff up. It's playing nicely. So far, it's not lagging. The stream's going well. I don't want to flip and push this too far. I know it's a bit redacted. I understand, sir. It's a little bit redacted. I'm using an iPhone. I should probably be streaming up, you know, far better flipping quality and whatnot. But for the moment, 720p does work. 
let's just leave it there okay i don't want to push it too far just in case this blows up again and i have to restart the stream seven times like i usually do hey mazadol even ready to beat gilbert burns can you call him a top three guy at this point in his career you know he's a little longer in the tooth um more pay-per-view buys the question would be so uh, edwards is edwards i think his star is bigger than ever but i think edwards fans you know especially across the pond there are gonna buy the pay-per-view no matter what so that's a guarantee so who's more famous in the grand scheme of things especially with a common fan is it Moswell or covington Moswell is more beloved covington's more hated so i think more people know covington it, I, I, it's pretty even it's pretty even even though Moswell has the, a little bit of a salty record and covington's only really lost to um kamar usman i would say they're pretty even i don't think i think you're around twenty five thousand pay-per-view buys no matter who it is, so it's not you know a huge drastic uh, difference. Twenty five thousand. I don't think it's two hundred fifty thousand difference. I'd say twenty five thousand. Like it's that close. Yeah, it's that close. Yeah, it's super close. Super close. Super super close. As far as the division to move on, you'd want Edwards Covington though. What else you got? If Izzy loses, is he basically the same as Robert Whitaker? And that's at uh, J.R. Young 22. Uh, if he's, is he based the same as Robert Whitaker? Yeah, because Izzy's Robert Whitaker's Achilles heel and Alex Pereira is uh, Izzy. I like how you said Achilles heels. Achilles heels. Such a weird way to pronounce it. Uh, Achilles heel. So Achilles. Achilles heel. They're the best guys. It just depends on the, the matchups, the style of the matchups. You know, if there's no Izzy, Robert Whitaker's your reigning champ for quite some time. If there's no Piera, um, you know, then, then Izzy's just dominating. So it's just all about stylistic matchups. Now, is he basically same as Robert Whitaker? I don't know necessarily if that's a bad thing. You know, yeah, you're not champ, but you're pretty damn good. You beat everybody else not named Izzy Adesanya. So that's not a bad place to be in. Um, if Izzy Lizzy basically the same as Robert Whitaker, you know, Robert Whitaker is such a talented dude because, you know, I think Robert Whitaker would give Alex Pierre a pretty fair shake as well. He's a, he's a different animal. What? Um, you know, I, I, I guess the question, I think what's going to be interesting. I'm a, I'm a UFC MMA flipping um, casual. But even I know that Alex Pereira would absolutely mollywop Robert, Robert Whitaker. Let's be real. We saw what Izzy did to Robert Whitaker, and we see what Iz we saw what Alex Pereira did to Israel Adesanya. Like, what makes him think that Robert Whitaker would give flipping, you know, flipping Alex Pereira any issues whatsoever? This is crazy, man. Thing is, you know, let's say it's gonna be better for the UFC if Izzy wins because if Izzy wins. There's a lot more options for him, a little bit, even though he's cleaned it out. Um, I will say this. No matter if Izzy wins or Alex Pierre wins, neither one of them are going to hold that belt for very long because uh, Hamzat's coming. And, again, it's all about matchups. It's not that this guy's bad or this guy's not very good or I'm throwing shade on anybody. It's all about stylistic matchups. And stylistically, Izzy, Adesanya, and Alex Pierre are awful, awful to match up with against Hamzat. He just, across the board, there couldn't be a worse matchup for both those gentlemen. What's interesting is Hamzat is a tougher, has a tougher fight against Robert Whitaker. You know, so it's all about at that high level who has this, you know, special set of skills to go against the opponent that they're facing. Well, it just so happens that the current guys fighting for the title would be just in a world of trouble against Hamzat. Robert Whitaker, I think it's a when if it went to a DraftKings kind of. Uh, pick up that Indian dude. As an MMA fan, it amazes how bland former fighter analysis is. It's often who wants it more. No analysis of intricacies of striking, takedown set, etc. Bisping and Shaw are guilty of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with you. To be fair, um, I do agree with you. I think it's interesting because I think for the most part. I think that's one of the reasons why I was really disappointed when Sh Brendan's flipping um, Shulp show was just so crap, especially after getting all that money from Showtime put behind it. I think if you're going to be, 
if you're going to be a former fighter doing analysis of UFC, if you can't break down fights in terms of techniques and striking all that malarkey, then at least bring a unique perspective from an, a fighter's point of view. But I didn't never get the passion or that sort of desire to present stuff differently from Brendan. He just wanted to sound kind of casual and kind of loose and free but he never wanted to get super detailed and kind of analyze fights and go down fight cards and striking techniques and whatnot whatever defense he didn't want to go too like granular with the details but he just wanted to keep it loose and goosey and i just think nowadays with the amount of great podcasts and youtube channels out there that do really great breakdowns from people who never fought before and are just really fanatical fans you know the guy called that mma guru guy being a good example i really enjoy his coverage and he's doing flipping fight card breakdowns or even just doing live streams of fights i think if you're a former fighter you just have to bring something different because there are regular dudes out there absolutely smashing and killing it so I think that's mainly the issue that I have with these type of guys. They don't really offer anything different, really. So it's like, what's the point of being a former fighter if you're just going to be saying the same thing everyone else says on the timeline? You need to bring something else a bit different. But I think ultimately the Brendan issue, which I will voice my theory, again, having been a fan, is that he secretly, not secretly, well, deep down, doesn't really like MMA or the UFC anyway. He kind of looks back at his time there with a little bit of regret, with a little bit of hate, especially when it comes to how it kind of ended, um, his relationship with Dana White, um, the the money issues and stuff, the sponsorship, the Reebok kit deal and shit. I think it kind of tainted it and spoiled it to him because I think he even said himself, I don't think Brendan's been to a UFC fight since, no, for a long time. Like, I can't remember the last one he's actually been to, like an actual fight. It might be the one where he had that altercation with... Um, one of the Diaz brothers, right, behind the scenes. But he often says it gives him PTSD to go to a UFC fight. But you would imagine, given how petty Dana White is, if Dana White heard Brendan was going to a UFC card, he would probably make a stink about getting him kicked out or some shit. So he's probably afraid of getting embarrassed in public as well like that. But I don't necessarily get the effect, I don't get the feeling from Brendan that he's really a fan of the sport anymore. I just think he does it because it's an easy money maker. Why not? right it's an easy way to make some quick money but i don't think he really cares about it um as much as he tries to pretend he does in my opinion i think it's kind of tainted and fell out of love with it for obvious reasons if odds thing robert wicker would be less of an underdog in that fight so it's all about stylistic matchups so um again i think it's better for the UFC if Izzy wins, and that forces Alex Pierre to jump to light heavyweight. There's better matchups for him at light heavyweight. Light heavyweight could use a boogeyman Alex Pierre up there. The middleweight could use some kind of order because we know it's just a matter of time for Alex Pierre jumps up there, and it's time for Hamzat to kind of reign over the middleweight divisions because Izzy's been that. But this is his tenth title fight, you know. So Izzy's been the face of the UFC and the middleweight division for how long? So. Sometimes it's good to switch things up, and I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, again, to be very clear, I think Hamzat beats Whitaker, Izzy, and Alex Pierre. So I think everyone's just keeping that seat warm to Hamzat decides to jump up to middleweight. What else you got? At uh, Weirs8, W-E-Y-E-R-S-8. My fight to watch is uh, Pfeiffer uh, Merchart. So if Pfeiffer gets submitted quickly by GM3, oh, GM3, I like that. Does it hurt his stock? What would be next if Pfeiffer gets another knockout win? Yeah, Pfeiffer's a, a bad man with GM in the middleweight division. If you guys aren't familiar with him, he was a two-time uh, participant on Dana White's Contender Series. First time, he actually had an elbow injury, got hurt. Uh, that was a number of years ago, and then finally, you know, he got better, better skill set, more mature, more experienced, came back on Dana White Contender Series, and uh, blew Yo, this nigga struggles to speak so much, it's like he's in pain. Do you think he's a CTE? I've never actually listened to him speak uninterrupted for a while now. He legitimately sounds like he's in pain, like his brain is like hurting his head, like he's got a migraine. You know when you got a migraine and someone's trying to talk to you and you're like, shut the fuck up. He's kind of got that little face in him. Like, God almighty, Brendan, man. Maybe maybe switch the rain for a glass of water or something. Fuck me. Blew the roof off the place in a second round TKO. So now the guy's doing the damn thing. He's a legit middleweight contender in the UFC. And uh, 
you know, he's another kid. Was he from uh, Pennsylvania? He trains with uh, the savages out there in Philadelphia and uh, Sean Brady and stuff like that. So he's around (laughs) uh, greatness and really good competitors. So the the sky's the limit on this kid. Um, If you were to beat Mershart, what happens for him? You know, Mershart's no no joke. So it's definitely a big test for the kid. But um, he's a big prospect, man. I would like... uh, Probably a ranked guy, right? Because Mershart kind of is. I don't. I hate when people say gatekeeper, but he's kind of that threshold where if you beat him, you're probably right there around 15, 14, right? So I would like to see him get the win of Kelvin Gaslam and uh, Curtis. That makes sense, and they're on the same card, same division. It makes a lot of sense. What else you got? At Art underscore zero three two one. Do we see Logan Paul in the UFC, especially after the Prime deal? Absolutely not. Um. I think you're going to see Logan Paul a lot more, right? Because he's pretty ingrained with the WWE and with the new accus- uh, kind of... <laughs> accusations. What are the new accusations? <laughs> uh, he's brain to stop there. He really said accusations. One of the new accusations of the UFC. I'm like, what? He's pretty ingrained with the WWE and with the new accus- uh kind of... Uh, <laughs> Merger? Is that what we're going to say, call it? The merger with the WWE and merger. UFC with uh, Vince McMahon and Dana White at the helm. <laughs> um, you know, and Logan Paul's a pretty, um, you know, he pops up at the WWE pretty frequently, especially the WrestleMania stuff like that. So he's definitely, uh, there's. it's going to be easier for guys to jump across and cross-pollinate there. And you see Logan Paul at more UFCs. Um, now, do I think he's actually going to fight in the UFC? I don't think so. It, you know, I'll never say never. That's what Dana says, right? Um, but it's going to be easier, you know, because I'm sure the WWE is going to have some say in who's going to cross over and stuff like that. So I, I would highly doubt it. I, I don't think Logan Paul uh, wants to do that. He says he does. Um, and it really predicated on the matchup. You know, I, I think the whole CM Punk thing, we tried this, right, with with guys that don't really have that technical background jumping the UFC. It's not a great look for the UFC. So I know Logan did, you know, the, the boxing, but it's just a different animal in the UFC. You know, it's the best fighters in the world. It's kind of a slap in the face with those guys. But um, it depends how far this WWE influences the UFC. You know, that's that worries me. I'll be honest. That that definitely worries me. It, it blurs the lines there. So be, if this WWE deal didn't happen, I'd be like, absolutely not. But because it did, it makes it a little easier to transition over the UFC, vice versa. So uh, it worries me. I'll be honest with you. It really worries me with the integrity of the UFC and uh, being a professional sport, especially a top five in, in the world, you know. So uh, the lines are getting blurred. So that means if the lines get blurred, You'd probably see a Logan Paul in there at some point. That stuff worries me. I'll be honest. This is like legitimately one of the worst Q and A sessions I've seen in my life. This is meant to be like a bit of a spark, maybe some mood of the lights and what this setting is. But God Almighty, yo, big up that Indian dude. Appreciate you, brother. Bro, this is so bland. Showtime got fleeced. No, 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 no. Wrong, that Indian dude. Brendan Shaw fleeced Showtime. That's what you got. Yeah, big up Eve. Thanks for the donation. Whitaker qualified for the Commonwealth Games for Australia in light heavyweight wrestling. The youth stopped him from competing. Hess a handful for everyone in the youth cat middleweight. Really? I didn't know that. That Whitaker qualified for the Commonwealth Games. So he's a legit wrestler. Bloody hell, you'd never guess that from his fighting style in the UFC, innit? Obviously, he does, he does have some decent takedowns, but for the most part, you'd see him mostly as a striker. So the fact that he has that in his arsenal is actually pretty decent. Okay, so maybe Brendan has a point there. He maybe would be an issue for Hamza if he does end up stepping up. I, I didn't know that. Fair play. Um, But yeah, going back to flipping that Indian guy here, yeah, that's, that's why I think we've seen such a big dip in quality overall across the board for what Brendan does because... Essentially, I think the check that he used to get from Showtime was meaty. And also, remember the Showtime show. I think production-wise, even though the show was terrible, how it was lit, how it was recorded was superb. Top-notch stuff. And then, of course, after they fired him or he left and bet on himself, whichever way you want to see it, the quality definitely dipped. But I think the funds that he used to get for Showtime kind of put a lot of people's... put a lot of food on a lot of people's plates. 
and as soon as it went away, it was no surprise. His team tried to kind of dwindle. The the set got a bit, had, you know, slapped stick and stuff. The production would dipped a little bit. You've got Chin basically being a one-man band, doing the flipping, switching on the screens and manning the boards and checking the cameras. It's all a bit mad, but yeah, Brendan definitely fleeced search time. He fleeced them. They, they didn't, you know, whatever. Yeah, for sure. Bloody hell, man. What else you got? At uh, Kamikaze, that's K-A-M-I-K-O-Z-Z-Z-Y. What do you think about Pettis saying him and Anderson Silva are supposed to fight in the UFC? That's insane. Uh, what, at 85? Uh, or catchweight, I guess? Uh, what are Pettis' chances ever getting back in the UFC? Not good, you know, especially now. You know, he went to PFL, and then he started his own organization, and then he's doing boxing now under Masvidal's banner, Game Bread. Um, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see why UFC would do it. I don't think there's... That 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 blow in acid reflux thing, that's a boosting, isn't it? That kind of always, you know, swallowing your fucking burps and shit. That's acid reflux, right? Or is that just him drinking too much fucking energy drinks? Much of a uh, demand there. As, in regards to the UFC, you know, Pettis is a Hall of Famer, first bout Hall of Famer. So uh, next time you see Pettis in the UFC, he'll be on stage getting his gold jacket. But Yo. Um, that's been half of that Q and A watch. Fifteen minutes of it. I think my soul and my brain is rotting on the inside. There'll probably be brain juice leaking down the side of my face soon. Um, enough for me, mate. Enough for me. Can't do that anymore. God Almighty, mate. That was an absolute struggle to get through. Struggle for him. A struggle for us to watch, and just all around a mess. So, uh, yeah, big up the big B Sean <laughs> for always providing the top level quality content. You love it. You have to absolutely love it. Um, going on from this, let's quickly cover this one. This is a clip taken from the Friday Kids. I read it. It says, Callan attempts to defend animal abuse. Let's see what this is about. God almighty, Brian Callan. Why do you do this to yourself? Please, why do you do this to yourself? Let's see what he's saying. I'm assuming this is because of that clip that went viral of Hasbullah um, pulling the ears of his cat and just generally being a bit of a nuisance to it and kicking it around the place and whatnot. And obviously people on the internet did not take too kindly to it. And he had to come out and kind of apologize and kind of not, um, but whatever. Let's see how Callan tries to defend Hezbollah on flipping the fire at the kid. And let's see how that makes sense. Let's see if he makes any sense here. Yes, I'm from. Right. I get he has a, he has a deal with the UFC. I know that. I also yeah. think I also think that that was. Uh, I also feel like the cat could whip like his ass. With the cat, yeah. What'd I mean, you say? I, I I don't think I it's... wouldn't label that as beating no, the cat, but also <laughs> don't hit animals. But also, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I dis but also disagree. I think if your cat's going like this when you're walking up to it, that means you. you I put, agree. Uh, my cat doesn't go like this when no. I come up to him, bro. Yeah. You know my cat. Like, does, you ever go he pet sticks a, his head out and yeah. he knows I'm about to. Pet you ever it. go to pet somebody's dog and they go, "Yo, hey oh, man, geez. what the oh. fuck is going on at this house?" Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's just repeat what the guest said and use that as, as our joke. Let's just do that. Let's just repeat what he said in our own way. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Height of comedy. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Can I, I, by, by the way, like you don't even if you are. Uh, <laughs> Spit it out, sir. Let's do that again. That was quite good. I, I, by, by the way, like you don't even if you are. Uh, I, by, by the way, like. You, <laughs> we'll go back. Yeah. No, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't. Can. Uh, no, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't. Can. I, <laughs> so no, I don't. I don't. Can. I, I, by, by the way, like you don't even if you are. <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy shit! One more time. One more time. One more time. I, I, by, by the way, like you don't even if you are, uh, <laughs> you know, teaching him a lesson. Which, by the way, studies have shown that's not how it works with cats. You know? Yes, is cats it possible don't... to say this that he, in his mind, yeah, yeah. Let's just um, let's just interrupt a guest when they're speaking and trying to make a point mid sentence. Let's just do that. That's just perfect podcasting. Loves his cat and was disciplining it without thinking he was hurting it. Is that possible? That no, because some people think they could do that with their wives and their kids. <laughs> Especially in Dagestan. Especially right? there. Especially where he's from. Um, I don't know about that. I, Dagestan, I guarantee, has a lot less uh, domestic violence than, say, the United States. Oh, Brian Callen's trying to be Brian right wing Callen, eh? He's trying to have some hot takes. He's desperately trying to have some edgy based 
kind of hot takes. Look what he's doing. He's he's running some material for for Louder and Crowder. Now he's flipping standing up for the um what you call it? He's standing up for the men of Dagestan, right? That's what he is. He's a men's rights activist for Dagestanian men. <laughs> Legendary. It states. You think women have more rights in Dagestan no, than no, but I think the United domestic States. violence is way worse. We have more people. Just more, more, we have way more, more booze, people. More booze. We have more people. Drugs and booze. Yeah, but there are philosophies when Drugs it comes to alcohol. women, though. <laughs> Don't put your hand up like that. Yeah, it was a Drugs stupid comment, alcohol. right? Drugs and alcohol. Stupid comment. Drugs and alcohol. Stupid comment. Drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Brian's uh, <laughs> That's a perfect way to end the flipping Brian Cannon and Brenda Shaw debate and argument. I'm also noticing the interesting amount of pushback. I know it's only a little clip, but aren't you noticing a little bit of uh, spice from Brian Cannon? He's now calling out Brendan a lot more times than before. He's still a bit cocky for him and, you know, and, and leaps at his defense, but he is kind of calling him out on some of his redacted things, right? I like this. I like a bit of this, actually. But it's just funny, isn't it? This is like when you go over to your friend's house, right, George, and, and you see your friend's parents arguing in front of you, or you see your friend arguing with their parents in front of you, and you kind of have to just act like you don't see it. Because you want to play the PlayStation as well. <laughs> you don't want to get kicked out. Because it's your turn next on FIFA. But you have to wait until the controller gets passed to you. So you're just sitting there hoping the, the mum or the dad doesn't tell you to leave. <laughs> but yeah, who would have guessed it, man? 2023, we'd see flipping Brian Callen defending animal abuse. Because you know what? Right-wing grift pays well. Right-wing grift pays somewhat well. Next clip we've got here courtesy of two bears one cave it features another really heavy-handed attempt from tom segura and burt crasher to go viral more so from burt crasher because he does that <laughs> that flipping stupid laugh that he does right so he they, they're clearly trying to do it um more often than not to try and go viral and it's so heavy-handed it's so obvious it's so bait that it kind of just angers you more than actually makes you laugh and makes you want to share it organically like they did with that, you know, actual organic viral moment with that flipping Kool-Aid clip. That one Kool-Aid clip actually went to flip in Bert's head. He drank too much of that Kool-Aid and now suddenly he's trying to recreate that moment every single time he sits next to flipping Tom Segura. And the only thing that I can flip and see when he sits next to Tom Segura is just how fat he is. Because Tom Segura has lost so much weight and he looks so different now. When he sat next to Bert, you actually see how big Bert is compared to him. So the attempts to go viral don't work. All you see is one really fat man and one former fat man. But what do I know? I don't know anything. This is obsessed with his iPad. We have to. We have to. <laughs> the eyeballs. His eyeballs too. <laughs> he ha he has this game where they, they he wants to buy a block of something. So Christina is like, I don't want to just be like, yeah. You know, we should make him like earn it. I'm like, yeah, I go, let me talk to him. So I was like, what's up? He's like, all right, this thing's like 25 bucks. <laughs> He's like, I think I should have to, you know, like do chores and stuff. I go, yeah, that's cool. And he goes, how long? <laughs> like, how long until I can get it? I go, um, he goes, how about two weeks? And I go, that seems fair. And then she gives, he gives the phone back to her. She goes, he doesn't understand how long two weeks is. <laughs> 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 it's uh, just a word for it's him. just a word and i was like what i, I know uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just a word he just, he just heard it he's just heard it yeah i'm sorry that's not that funny that's a pretty sweet story to tell about your son or about your child it's pretty sweet it's pretty endearing it might make you want to cry it might make you want to you know cry like oh my god that's so sweet oh it might make you want to ah right but it's not going to make you wheeze and turn red like that let's see where is it where is it there he is that that shouldn't make you want to do this like what and i'm convinced also he knows i have a feeling this is my theory again because i saw that little sneaky thing he did on something's burning when he had a legion of skanks guys on there and he was talking about brendan and he did that thing where he was flipping whatever he was frying in, a, in the frying pan and he purposely splashed the oil on his feet i have a fear and he kind of started to flip around oh my god because he had like flip-flops on i have a theory that burt crasher knows how to make his head go red like he notices it he knows how to make his head go beat red 
from laughing and kind of holding in his voice i'm pretty sure or holding his breath sorry i'm pretty sure he has it kind of dialed in how he kind of like is able to sort of like turn into a you know a human kettle i'm pretty sure of it because this is really insane how are you laughing this much over such an innocuous innocuous like story about someone's kid saying something cute this made you laugh like this really just, he just heard it. He's just heard it. Yeah. So I was like, no, he. She goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was like, I go, you sure? She goes, he definitely doesn't. He I go, definitely has no idea. What yeah. Like. This is like we're, we're like a like in this is like is he ad libbing it? He definitely doesn't know what he feels like. He doesn't know what one week is. He doesn't know what the word is. He's having a nightmare. There she goes. It's like a flipping announcement, a flipping horse race or something. She's running around the first four now. She's tripping number seven. Oh, but it's like, what? He doesn't. So he gets him back the phone. I, he goes, how many days is two weeks? I go, it's 14. He goes, that's a long time. I go, how about one week? He goes, how many days is that? He didn't know what the word I'm sorry. There's nothing in that joke or that story that's requiring a flipping reaction like that that is legitimately him trying to recreate that flipping you know what's it called that kool-aid moment he definitely wants another kool-aid moment after seeing how viral that went you can tell birch trying to recreate that again what the fuck is this man imagine being around this guy like nothing is ever that funny he's kind of like a yeah because you know what's funny about it i just realized um who's that guy is it jimmy fallon a lot of these comedians take the piss out of that guy. Is it Jimmy Fallon, that talk show host, who does who over laughs at everyone's jokes? Is it Jimmy Fallon or whatever? He's worse than Fallon, in my opinion. At least Fallon's trying to put on a good live TV show and make the guests feel comfortable or something or whatever, right? It's kind of done in jest. I don't know. It's a little bit understandable on Fallon. But on podcasts, on every moment he gets in front of a camera, he's trying to recreate that moment with the flipping, you know, Kool-Aid by slapping himself, walking, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I'm going to faint, I'm going to faint. No, please faint, sir. Please. Please faint for a couple of minutes. You know, let your heart stop and then resuscitate yourself so that you can come back a better person. Please. You actually maybe do need to stop breathing for a while. You know, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but you might need to stop breathing for a little bit just a little bit just to kind of get you back to your base level to kind of keep you honest to some degree because constantly breathing and constantly drinking has led you to this point maybe you do need to hold your breath and you know just hold it in for a very very long time please sir because god almighty what the hell is this man i don't understand this in the slightest so bizarre such a ugh. I, I don't know i find it i find all that stuff gross man i really do it kind of takes a fun out listening to podcasts as well because you can hear the fakeness and the try hardness when they're trying to do all that stuff with them all the time because i don't know <laughs> that's a good point freshwater Addy. when you're when you're that rich and, and that buzzed you'll laugh a lot at hard yeah true that's a good point actually there is kind of a bit of that in there isn't it when you have you know you're actually wealthy and you legitimately have no real day-to-day -day struggles in your life maybe things are a lot funnier to you day by day you know life is ridiculously funny because you've because in your head you've completed life you've kind of figured it out it's all well and good here right i flipping love that okay that, that's actually a good point <laughs> big up you that's actually a legit point um let's move let's carry on with this um let's talk about this one so this in my opinion is the real elephant in the room right and i think this will be part of the title of the show if you are watching this after the fact so this clip is taken from the joe rogan experience featuring ari shafir and big jay okerson and they're essentially talking about um stand-up comedians and the quality of them and sometimes when you have this occasion where you meet somebody in stand-up who happens to be a stand-up you like them first but then you realize they're terrible at stand-up after the fact then it kind of taints how much you like them because now you don't want to be mean and tell them they're crap at what they do but you do like them as a person so that kind of conundrum and then rogan mentioned something interesting kind of on a sly which may explain why brendan Schwab hasn't been booked yet at the comedy mothership because so far we've seen Derek poston 
We've seen that other guy, I think his name is Essan or Hassan, something. I forgot his surname. Please forgive me. Those two guys used to write for Flipping Brendan back in the day. We've seen Eric Griffin now recently, who's a co-host on the Flipping... Oh, my hands look kind of dry here, don't they? Um, we've seen Eric Griffin, who's a co-host on the Flipping Golden Hour. He's recently got books to do a... You know, Eric Griffin and friends at the Mothership. So slowly but surely... Rogan is picking and choosing people from LA who he's fans of to have performing at his show. But we haven't seen Brendan perform there, even though him and Flip and Joe are good friends. And we haven't seen Callum perform there, actually, even though him and Joe are good friends. And Chris Lee, we also know that's not going to happen because, you know, those allegations. But it's been very interesting to see that kind of happen in real time of like, oh, these guys kind of pretend like they're best friends and they've got each other's back. But actually, you can tell a lot about what they think about each other via their actions especially when it comes to stand-up who do they go on tour with who do they let open for them bloody blah 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 will kind of let you know how they see each other in terms of the hierarchy or the quality in flipping stand-up and material that they got so with this little comment that rogan made it's clear to see that rogan does not rate brendan stand-up and that's the main reason why he hasn't been invited to the comedy mothership that is just a guess that is just a theory an assumption that i'm plucking out from the air from listening to these guys talk i have no further information they didn't say that word for word because some people have been complaining in the comments that i'm just you know what's that thing called that i am making things up or making dumb assumptions i know i am that's the beauty of youtube you make dumb assumptions you talk out of your ass and i love to talk i'm a bum bum so this is rogan saying the same thing that i just said a minute ago uh, there's a bunch oh, of those. hurts. Yeah, it's unfortunate, you know, because yeah. sometimes you become friends with them before you see their set. Yeah, <laughs> and then you see them, and they, you know, they, they want to come on your do. podcast, or they want to, uh, you know, hey, you know, I know you're doing a show in Minneapolis. I'm actually from there. I'd love to open for you. Like. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> well, we got a problem. I know oh, you got to go. I, I, I just booked somebody. And you got to scramble to no, get no, somebody no. right you, then. You kind of have to have a real conversation with them, otherwise it's going to keep coming up. But you got to kind of <sighs> figure out a way to say it in a way that's. Yeah, fortunately, I haven't, I haven't had to do that to suck. too many people. Yeah, I'm not that person. It's not at even. All. The, it's You'll just, just like, take it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I just, I'll, I'll absolutely take it. So interesting comment there, right? And first of all, I have to say. I kind of respect Rogan for being like, hey, no, you have to have that conversation. I kind of like that because I'd imagine a lot of people kind of are also thankful of it when they find out that he doesn't rate their comedy because it at least lets you know where you stand. So you're not kind of in this weird space where you're not too sure what's happened why he's not inviting you to the show why doesn't he ever put you on the road why doesn't he ever let you open when you ask the question and he actually answers and is honest and says hey i just don't think you're funny i don't think you match my style that's actually pretty cool because you'd imagine in that pod in that comedy scene a lot of people are quite bushy-washy they're kind of vague they don't really say how they feel or what they mean and you're kind of left sometimes always not knowing where you stand with people so it's quite nice that the top guy in that industry is very honest and is able if you ask him to say hey i don't want this you know i don't want that as fear vaughn would say right or fear vaughn as people kept telling me that i say fear vaughn i should say fear vaughn but anyway as fear vaughn would say so i get that and i like that but one thing that's really hilarious a lot of people have been saying out here is that rogan kind of thrust brendan out onto the stage he catapulted him to success and to stardom but didn't really so no he came to stardom so now he's kind of to blame for basically unleashing rogan or uh, uh, at least you burn it onto the world and kind of subjecting us to flipping you be surprised and gringo happy and whatever else he makes in the future like people are saying it's rogan's fault i don't believe that i think it's mostly brendan's fault i think it's not rogan's fault for looking out for his friend <clears throat> and trying to do right by him especially after he made him quit the ufc he kind of did what a good friend would do and basically gave him an, uh, a kind of um, a sec a backup plan that then led to him becoming richer and more successful than he ever would have done in any other avenue that he would have pursued that didn't work out for him. So credit to Rogan for being a good friend. It's not his fault that Brennan didn't do comedy the quote-unquote right way to kind of make sure that he gave himself the best chance to be successful and to be funny he just went kind of the short way took shortcuts um, took advantage of people's generosity of the friendship he had with rogan and essentially it kind of went and hurt him as well in the long run because now you're seeing that rogan despite being a little bit up his own ass and quite insufferable one thing that rogan does have and takes seriously is stand up 
he's a real student of the game and he doesn't suffer falls gladly when it comes to swat so i kind of do like him and his ability to be really honest when it comes to stand-up especially amongst his friends he doesn't you can tell he's not the kind of guy that's going to put somebody on just because they're friends he actually actually like you and that's a really good um that kind of makes you trust what he has to say about stand-up more yeah big up fresh out of the water baddie thanks for helping me through another 10 hours shift <laughs> no worries fresh out of the water buddy. happy to help man this is this is kind of slightly been my dream anyway because i think i mentioned it prior um i don't have many irl friends and one of the things i used to always love when i was at work was to slap on a flipping podcast and listen to that for hours on end especially if i was working in the stock room of some retail store somewhere you just slap on a podcast and listen to it while you're doing your work at the back and literally the hours go by so quickly and then you realize it's lunchtime then you realize it's the end of the day and you're kind of going home straight away and I absolutely loved it so my dream always was when i was doing these live streams was that i wanted it always to be the perfect accompanying thing that you can listen to in the back Background. you don't have to actively listen to my shit and kind of sit there and take notes what i'm saying is never that serious it's just about providing you guys with uh decent stuff to put on the background that's somewhat entertaining if i could do that then i'm happy then i'm happy but yeah so big up rogan anyway going back to what i was saying big up rogan for being honest with his friends and saying it will how he feels and what about their quality of their flipping stand-up but this is also should be a pretty sad thing for brennan to realize that even though they're friends and they, they used to be quite like more, way closer than they are now, he knows for sure that Rogan doesn't think he's funny. That must be brutal to take. For all the sucking up he's done, for all the getting on his knees, all the fellatio he's given to Rogan, it hasn't amounted to nothing because at the end of the day, you can go on there and do as much as he wants in terms of promotion on his show, which he doesn't do that much either because he doesn't guest on there as much as he did before it's clear to see that Rogan doesn't find the guy funny in the slightest, which is why he doesn't want him to play at his club. Pretty brutal, isn't it? But it's also good that there's that honesty that exists in the comedy world. It isn't just all, we're comedy podcast friends and we're going to try and convince the audience that we're also murderers. No, no, no. Murderers only play at the comedy mothership. Murderers only play there. Moving on from that, um, we got this interesting clip again, courtesy of the Friday Kids over it, featuring Brian Callan's Instagram story, where he's having some banter with Steven Crowder. And again, I don't really know Steven Crowder too tough, right? I don't know him that well. I don't know his content too well. I, I know he did that kind of, what's that thing called? Um, those debates where he sits on the table. I've watched a few of those here and there, but I don't really know his personality too well. So I don't know if this is banter or if this is him actually annoyed but trying to make it seem like it's banter. What do you think? I'd love to know your opinions in the chat. About to go live here? No, no, they, they, they should send you the Okay. So that way you'll need to hit a button and it'll like cross. I know, but I'm trying to do promotion right now. Steven, what? let's go live. Let's make this the best show ever. Is this huh? already live? No, but I'm... You have no idea what I could have been doing and that camera's turned on? Well, yeah, but That's the way you... get in trouble, Brian. But you, you move That's like... That's why you a, get in trouble. You move like a jungle cat. About to go yeah, live here, guys. This is how we do it. Is there a way to make me less narrow and less gray? The sweater is really bringing out my age. What do you think that is about? Was that was that real? Was that humor? Was Crowder just being playing into the bit? Like what's happened there? That was a bit awkward, bruh. Like, yikes. <laughs> like what's going on there? Was he actually annoyed? Was that? Or do you, I don't know. Crowder's a bit dry. I know his, his humor could be a little bit on the darker side. I don't know. Like again, I don't. I haven't watched enough of Crowder to judge his character. But do you think that's actually him annoyed, or do you think he's pretending not to be annoyed and joking? I don't know. I don't have to read that one, man. I don't have to read that one. People say, okay, Crowder was not wrong either. Pathetic. It was real. Crowder saying it's a bit. Crowder is less, even less funny than Brendan annoyed boss tone exactly that's what i thought ultimo that's why you get fired it's 100 percent truth warning alan n exactly trying to recreate george floyd's death yeah i know he did i saw that um pretty accurate to be fair Woo. um <laughs> natasha ski yep james banks he was annoyed for sure uche don't record me without telling me that's a weird way to move yeah it's okay. <laughs> credit wants control the narrative at all times yo man 
Imagine imagine getting fired at 60 years of age from the louder and crowder. Imagine how embarrassing that would be to get fired at 60 years of age when you're Brian Callen from loud from louder and crowder because you didn't know how to behave on set because you you know you was addicted to your fucking smartphone like as if you're some Gen Z pop star or something. Imagine an old man getting fired from uh, Lauda Ricarda because they can't put down their fucking iPhone. <laughs> people are saying it's real. Okay, everyone's saying it's real. Wow, people are saying it's real. Jesus Christos, man. What a bizarre interaction there from two supposed colleagues getting to know each other, um, employee and boss, new hire, first week at work, or no, second week at work, bedding in process. Like, God damn it, man. Crowder really, like, let him know, hey, this is why you get fired. This is why you have people making allegations in the Los Angeles Times. <laughs> you don't pay attention to the details. <laughs> Holy shit, Callan, man. What are you doing, Callan? What are you doing? What are you doing here? But, yeah, let me restress this again. Why does it keep crashing? I don't know why it keeps crashing. It just keeps crashing, the chat. For some reason... The chat just keeps on crashing. But everything else is working. I'm okay with that. If the computer doesn't lag, but then the chat crashes all the time, I think that's a pretty good win. I'm not going to lie. Then somebody shared this also. I, I don't really want to check this out, but we just have to. Somebody shared this on the Fire and the Kids subreddit, and this is pretty grim. This looks like this is from BGL's um, former estranged missus, and she decided to post this on her Instagram stories. It reads as follows. Women have reached out to me who know my abuser from either before I met him or during my marriage with him. Cheater, abuser, he's hitting me. He's attacking me. The things I've found out, they are horrible. They are devastating, but they also confirm my worst suspicions. My abuser never used a condom. Oops, he's fucking me. <laughs> he's barebacking me. He's attacking me. <laughs> i know this is horrible to say but i'm sorry this that, that stuff made me laugh and they're both as toxic as each other so please don't attack me i love everyone okay but please that was hilarious um my abuser never uses condoms with many people he has cheated on me with he and I, oof is that including the dudes um he and i had a very active sex life god almighty mate like oh sex on the mind they, they, okay cool let us know what positions did you get in he and i had a very sexist active sex life we with one another and he would put my health at risk constantly these women have confirmed physical and emotional abusive aggressive behavior from him if anyone has experienced this behavior from him too i ask you to come forward and talk to me you are not alone <laughs> <laughs> he's attacking me <laughs> honestly i don't know what's going on here why is she telling the internet this stuff man go to the police or something i don't know man what what do you want to do with this information you know like bgl's out here doing what he's doing actually let's see what actual what's what's bgl up to What's Mark Harley up to? Mark Harley. Is that his name? Harley. Instagram. What is he actually up to? I haven't heard of him in a while. What's Mark Harley doing these days? Is that his bio? The buffest person in the world? Oh, kind of cringe. What is he doing right now? What is Harley? What is hella Mark Harley doing so far? He's filming skits and bits. He's dressing up in lingerie. Let's see his skits and bits. Hopefully he doesn't have any copyright music in it, right? I don't want to hear no money bag yo in this shit. What is this? Let's see the skits and bits. Haters will say... Oh, he's still doing the haters will say thing, even though Brendan took it away from him. He's still using that. Haters will say, I don't make a TikTok with local teenagers on site if they recognize me. Okay, let's see what this means. Are you the guy from TikTok? Are you the guy from TikTok? Are we both the guys from TikTok? Ah! Okay. Okay. Next one. 
Haters will say it's safe out here in these gyms. I'm telling you, it ascended into my abdomen. Are you using this cable? Mark? God, nope, not at all. Why are you guys looking at me? Oh, because we don't want you to think, you know, we're staring at you. Who's even talking right now? I can't see. But I want you guys to look at me. Am I doing this right? If we were look looking, I would say it looks good. It sounds good, though. Are you guys stopping ridiculous? I want you guys. Okay, off, exit, next one. What's this one? No caption. So I'm watching this, waiting for Donald Trump to get arraigned, and look who walks out. Oh my gosh, that's Lestat. That is a beautiful ass vampire right here. I would take the dark gift from him. Wow. Wow. Okay. Any? What, what else is he doing? That's it. Let's check his stories. What's he? What's he doing? Jesus Christ. Do I mean TikTok? These guys have been going. At it for 10 minutes and they just keep slapping each other look and none of them are getting it watch, watch. Go. so in the divorce the divorce between brendan and and bgl bgl got to keep zoo culture gym it looks like right that's the red gym that's what the red fixtures right he got to keep it so uh bgl got zoo culture uh brendan got chin i don't know what else did he get <laughs> he got rain the drinks he got to keep whatever addies he had jesus christ man like, like, it's way too much weight. It's way too bring him back. He's gonna break his back. Okay, I'm not doing this. I'm not going through his stories. I don't give a fucking fuck. But yeah, good to see he's alive and stuff, I guess. Um, you know, the lady doesn't seem to be that impressed by him, I guess it looks like. She's out here, you know, saying he's attacking me. Non condom is usage, abuse, emotional stuff. I don't know what they want us to do with this information. Hopefully, everybody recovers. You know, pray to Jesus, Allah, Buddha, whoever you want to pray to for rest and relaxation. But there's not much we can do here for any of these people. Um, you know, hope for the best. Um, yeah, man, hope for the best. <laughs> hope for the best. Hope for the best. <laughs> what can you do? God Almighty, that was flipping shocking. What kind of content is that? Um, but yeah, moving on from that, let's talk about this. This is pretty funny, right? This is pretty funny. So, Brendan has this thing that I'm not too sure where when he developed it or what happened because it's very strange because he's, you know, I think even Brendan would say, I don't think he thinks he's the flipping smartest guy in the world, right? He's kind of dumb. But it's also funny how somebody as dumb as Brendan is, is also very sensitive when it comes to being proven wrong. He doesn't seem to like it when people point out how he, you know, how he maybe incorrectly speaks or says things or incorrect grammar, you know, pronunciation, facts, whatever. He just hates all that sort of stuff, really, really dislikes it. So, um he does it quite often and this is a really good example of it which is really bizarre taken from the final kid subreddit right really strange example of him refusing to admit when he's wrong and look how silly this debate or this kind of back and forth is why would you wanna not just say hey my bad you know i didn't know and just move on why would you wanna refuse to not apologize over this debate just listen to this listen to how ridiculous this sounds if you know this but that's a that's a, is that a 20,000 pound animal? 6,000, don't say 20,000, 6,000 pounds. 6,000. Yeah, how much 6,000. I think they're bigger than 6,000. No, 6,000 pounds, dude. 20,000, bro? It's not a dinosaur, 20, bitch. Eight, eight, six, yeah. eight. That's a female adult. Look at the males. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> Look at the males. No, the females are bigger than the males. Hold, please. I don't know about that, dude. I know my 16,000 16, pounds, Bubba. 16,000 <laughs> Look his face. pounds. Look his face. Look. Okay. Okay. Now listen. Listen, you calm down. <laughs> no, I'm saying the, no, the ones in the two world aren't that big because they're they're, right. they're raised in the but, but, small but, but, confinement. By the way, as if there's oh, it's the one in Sea World. They're the different ones. It's a difference, like 8, no, the one that killed pounds. her is six. The one that killed her was six thousand pounds. Okay, that's a lot of weight. Yeah, it's all, huge. but it's also they're savages. They're, yeah. They have no enemies in the ocean. Well, they twenty two thousand pounds, heaviest killer whale. Jesus, 
32 feet long, 22,000 pounds. I think he's enormous. What's a, what do you think? What, what do you think that's about? Why, why does he just not want to say, my bad? Oh, no, really? They're 20,000. Okay, cool. My bad. I thought there was six. What's so bad about saying that? It's a stupid debate. Like, who gives a fuck? Just admit you're wrong and keep it moving. It's just his face here when he's, his brain is literally trying to process the fact that he may be incorrect. That gets me. The face here. Look at the face. Ref pure refusal in his face. Nope. 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 <laughs> he's just not having it. <laughs> he's like, nope. Not right in the slide. Look at it. Doesn't want to admit. He's like, yeah, whatever. I can still kill everyone in this room. I've still got a bigger dick than you. Walk me to my truck. You fuck chicks. Baddies and addies. Right? He's just thinking all of that in his head right now. <laughs> you do not matter. Blockbuster. Right? <laughs> it's all just running through his head right now. Look at that. It's like <laughs> Why are you so angry? And not being right in this dumb debate. Just say, hey, I got it incorrect. My bad. Put your hands up and keep you moving. But that uh, that unwillingness to admit when he's wrong is, I think, a textbook example of why I think he's never going to be able to turn it around. The narrative in any facet, as he would say, regarding his perception online or just how people kind of see him. It's never going to change. Because if he's this unwilling to just hold up his hands and say, hey, I got this wrong, he's also unwilling to allow himself to be the butt of the jokes because he's too thin-skinned and he starts to take it personally. And he might C-clamp you or he might put your entire family in the C-clamp, Chris Benoit style. That's the kind of time that he's on. He'd much rather catch an M charge if you decide to like imagine a comedy roast with brendan where you actually get legit funny comedians on to roast him and to really rip into him and make it a fun show that thing could end in a bloodbath that could legitimately be the most tragic event ever recorded in the history of entertainment or stand-up history ever you know you could go out and just kind of go kamikaze style and tear everyone's necks off from their flipping shoulders he would not have it that's how thin skinned he is this is the proof of it. A dumb debate about fucking orcas and whales and shit. And look at him. He doesn't he refuse. It's like he's boiling inside. He does not want to admit, you know, he was wrong. Just imagine if there was a third guest here laughing and giggling and cackling that he was wrong. He would legitimately snap and go killer style, you know, block out the flipping camera and just start taking everyone out in the room. Right? Like a couple of double eggs. Nothing a double egg could have sorted out. And it's all flipping lights out for everybody. It's really odd how he has that personality. Very, very, very bizarre. Given it's a comedy podcast also. The need to be right on these dumbass flipping debates. It's absolutely brutal. <laughs> I don't understand it in the slightest. I really don't. Uh, and then, of course, another instance taken from, again, the Friday the Kids subreddit. So big up those guys because I'm not going through the content and watching it ever again because it legitimately made the brain fluid that i have in my head seep out through my ears and sometimes dribble out of my flipping nostrils it was horrendous i don't know how those guys over there do it but i do give them credit and i'm thankful for those homeless cats every single day someone took this clip of brendan lying about the most unnecessary this is the most unnecessary lie i've seen him lie ever or in a long time but it's also an example of him just being a pathological liar in all intents and purposes. Look at this bizarre, bizarre lie. And there's examples of him lying with references from the past with these clips. This is an awesome, awesome clip. I took my family to SeaWorld, and yeah. I, I, I've never seen that Blackfish documentary. So I, I Never seen the Blackfish documentary, by the way. Blackfish, not Blackfish, Blackfish. Because I'm a black man, right, living in a wag world <laughs> but, you know i was like whatever and there was one big killer whale and I again I've never, i haven't seen the dog before i went to sea world but the big one had his fin like this That's That's not good. You remember black great doc never seen it look how good brendan looks here holy shit alcohol is a hell of a fucking drug look how good he looks chiseled buccal fat gone like jawline look how even skinny his legs here look there you can't see underneath the text, but like he looks like a different person. That looks like his younger brother. Fucking hell, mate. 
alcohol is a hell of a drug man this should be a p this should be a psa for anybody out there flipping you know sipping on too many ipas jesus christos mate Fish, did you guys watch Blackfish on CNN? I still love flipping. You can't see in a clip here. Brett, Brett, Brian's got that little Pepe Le Pew, um, you know, um, Tintin little little flick thing that he used to have here. That used to always make me flipping laugh. That little Tintin thing he had. I don't know who's told him that was a good idea, but I'm glad he shaved it off and just has his hair like one level. That little Tintin little quiff he used to have used to always make me laugh. Sure yeah. did. Ruined, ruins SeaWorld. Yeah. 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 yeah, that um, that documentary that came out, man, that was Blackfish, hard. Blackfish. So you did oh. watch it because I feel like it's animal cruelty. Everyone's more knowledgeable on how the animals feel. Yeah. Like you know, you watch Blackfish and the, from the Depression, their fins are down. What are we doing? What are we doing? And I looked at my girl. I go, hold up, I've never seen this dog. <laughs> yeah. I was, I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm ignorant to it. Yeah. But you've seen the dog, and you still allow us to go to see work. <laughs> yeah. Go. So what do you think happened there? Do you think Brendan didn't see the documentary? Great Doc never seen it because he wanted to tell the story the way he told the story and make it seem like he went in there blind and then he saw the treatment of these whales and was like, oh my God, this broke my heart. How could my wife put me in this position? Or do you think he saw it, forgot he saw it and generally was surprised when he got there? I don't know. But it's such a weird lie to make when there's evidence of you actually saying that you see, you saw it before. What a bizarre thing to say. Or maybe he never actually saw the documentary in the first place when it came out. He just said he saw it because everyone watched it at the same time. It's like, what's that, what's that documentary called? Is it Cowspiracy? Right? That there, was a, there was a time when everyone was watching these flipping environmental, um, you know, type of documentaries and whatnot. And he just said that he watched it because it was the current thing in the news at the time. Maybe. Maybe that was a, maybe that was a thing. But it's such a weird lie to say because it's clear that there's evidence that he said he did watch it in the past but again this is b Shorb. he lies for a living he lies for a living let's move on from that one let's go on to some other clips here boom 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 uh da, 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 da. oh yeah cool let's see this one i think we're talking about that the blackfish we're talking about this but once I'm actually tearing through the flipping, this is what happens when the computer's not lagging. You actually do tear through the flipping tabs like an absolute G. So I'm loving life right now. Most of the tabs have been torn through. Um, let's actually go on to this. Uh, let me get it up on here, bear a second. Yeah, Bill Burr on, um, on, on Psychiatrist. I really love this clip. Let's play this clip. Bill Burr's my flipping, my top guy. I absolutely love this guy so, so, so much. Um, let's get this on the screen. Bill Burr on Psychiatrist. Not Jordan Peterson, but I'm a psychiatrist. For why you suck at reading out loud. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Jesus Christ. It's that bad that we had to bring a professional on here? Hey, Billy Boy Freud. You get it? Sigmund Freud. I am a child and adolescent psychiatrist. For some reason, C-H-I-A, he had capitalized. Working in a major city. So, you know, I'm not a mouth-breathing moron, at least on this topic. Here is the link to my credentials. I'm not clicking on that fucking thing, you self-involved jackass. <laughs> um, to add to my professional experience... I mean, how do I know this is you? You you can just fucking send a link to anything. I broke the uh, I broke the uh, I broke the deadlift fucking uh, clean jerk fucking thing, whatever the hell you call it. Here's a link to me doing it. How do I know it's you? It's such All a right. Hate, yeah. To add to my professional experience, I also personally have a mild form of ADHD that was never formally treated until later in life, but definitely has led to issues with forgetfulness and organization throughout my life. All right. First of all, I just want to let you know that I'm offended that you feel because you work with children and adolescents that I'm not even adult enough. That's actually it's pretty fucking accurate. All right. I get it. You act like a child. You end up getting a child psychologist to fucking figure out what your problem is. OK, fair enough. Um, 
A common misconception about ADHD is that it means you can't focus on things. That's not true. As you yourself may have experienced, people with ADHD struggle to focus on certain things, but hyper-focus on other things that are complex and sustain their interest. Yes, I believe I've talked about this, and I think that you're plagiarizing me from what you listen to on the podcast, you know, so you can, <laughs> you can fucking continue to add, like, legitimacy to your claims that you're a child and adolescent psychologist. Okay? I would have believed that you were. The fact that you had to fucking give me a link, you know, let's, let's, why don't we analyze you? What's going on with you that you felt the need that you had to send your resume to me? You know, what, what, let's, let's talk about that. What's, He's what's going on so with that? Angry. Like, where's that coming from? You know, talk about your childhood. Did you feel that your parents built you up? Do you feel that they believed in you and thought that you could achieve things? Did they not? Is that why you sent me, a complete stranger, your resume? Because in a way, I was, you know, because this is my podcast, I represented an authority figure and, a, dare I say, a parental sort of figure that, that you went back to being six years old again and had to send me your fucking trumped-up resume? Um, Yay! Big up Jacob Kelp for being a member. Taz Believer. Welcome to the cult, my friend. We don't touch people up here. No Delia Madness, but we just have a little bit of banter and laugh and send each other weird emojis in the chat. So welcome. Welcome. Common misconception about ADHD is that it means you can't focus. I read all that shit. That's fucking funny. I can't focus on things. I just fucking literally took a left <laughs> turn and then came back and started rereading what I already read. This hyper-focus often leads them to forget or ignore other things they can't do. Forget or ignore other things that they can't do. Okay, so the issue with HDHD isn't the inability <laughs> so to mad. focus, but the inability to appropriate allo to appropriate to appropriate allocate that focus. I think you meant appropriately allocate that focus. Yes, I understand all of this. I am hyper focused when I fly a helicopter. Uh, when my wife is talking to me about what our day is, I'm looking at my phone and also thinking about something. I'm not focusing on anything. Um, yeah, I, I understand this stuff. This is like, like don't ever let the report or your, your high school transcript like that isn't that isn't a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of how you felt about school. <laughs> I finally figured that out. Because if you just take it at face value, like I'm dumb, I'm not smart. It's like no, I I wasn't into this shit. I don't like school. It's way different than being stupid. Um, does that make sense? Um, another <laughs> common issue is that people with ADHD have trouble keeping up with how fast their thoughts are going, and it tends to present itself when reading. Yeah, I found if I actually slow down, I read much better. I also fucking, if I get in my head and then I try to go even faster, it all goes off the rails. And I also think that I, when I'm reading slowly, it sounds way slower to the listener. Let's try reading the rest of this really slowly. <laughs> While reading the first and second word, your mind is already on to the third and fourth word. I already fucked it up. Is already on to the third and fourth. I'm still stupid. Uh, you can read entire sentences and paragraphs, and by the end of it, think, what the fuck did I just read? Yes. Or when reading out loud, you stumble over your words. Yes. Because your mouth can't keep up with your fast, with how with your fast, your thoughts are going. You don't have, you're not a fucking psychologist. You can't even write a goddamn email. Or you have HD, ADHD too? Is that your fucking excuse? This is an enigma. I don't know what this fucking guy is. This sometimes get confused with dyslexia, although ADHD and dyslexia do occur some together sometimes. You're basically describing me. I have a little bit of that. Like when I look at billboards, I think they say something other than what they say. The words don't get jumbled up, but they, I just look at the words and I think they say something else. Uh, meds and therapy can definitely help severe forms. Why do you need to help it? Just, you're fucking really smart. Your brain's going too fast for this bullshit that you don't want to fucking read. Why would you drug that out of you? Go find something that holds your interest. 
you know? Like aviation or a pair of fucking tits. Uh, but there are plenty of people with more manageable forms who adapt and learn shortcuts and live full lives without treatment. I did that until I was about 30. Hope this wasn't too hard for you to read. Well, maybe you shouldn't have so many fucking spelling errors next time, Mr. <laughs> fucking Resume. Billy Bird Brain. All the best to you and the kiddos and Nia. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. Um, yeah, I... He's so mad. Honestly, he's so fucking mad. I love the flipping questions and answers of people because I feel like the fans of Bill Burr know how to press his buttons really subtly. And when you press his buttons by like being kind of condescending telling him what to do but then also kind of purposely you know fucking up the words and misspelling stuff it always sends them on a flipping tangent i fucking love it man bill burr is a fucking legend one of the proper um you know comedians out there and actually enjoys podcasts because he actually does try to make you laugh and he's a real pleasure because when he has his wife on there guess what they actually sound like they love each other it's quite refreshing to hear somebody in comedy who has a partner who has a wife and doesn't talk to them or treat them or make them sound like they're just some you know living nanny or something they actually sound like they're a partnership they work together to help raise their kids to help him do his career and whatnot you know what i mean like it actually looks like a they actually sound like a good team and nia is absolutely hilarious she rips bill burr better than anybody i've ever seen like she's the only person i've seen on a pot of heard in a podcast sorry actually be able to go toe to toe with bill burr it's absolutely amazing honestly some of the Nia, i know some of the guys on the reddit disagree but i think some of the Nia episodes are some of the best ones his wife Nia, when she comes on the show is amazing man she's she's so funny the i love the voice and impression she does of bill burr also it's flipping amazing like it's great man i love them together they're amazing big fan big fan big fan big fan Anyway, moving on. Quick little intermission. I wanted to point this out because I know this is quite bad to say um, because this is technically fat shaming. But I just wanted to say in general that I would never, ever, 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 ever let myself get to this level. I couldn't do it. I couldn't let myself get to flocko level of flipping fatness. It's just impossible. I look at this picture I look at this lineup and it makes me sad because I'm a no jumper fan to see how they've devolved into this cast of characters. Adam from No Jumper decided to single handedly, um, you know, change the entire platform, burn it to the ground because he owns it and start it all again with these absolute, you know, B grade replacements, you know. But these guys are shocking regardless as replacements for ad you know for t-rail for smack for duno for house phone for blase all those guys but they're also incredibly offensive to watch on the eye and the funny thing about it is that this guy here on the right right flocko this guy here in the flipping lakers shorts that look like booty shorts right that's how big he is he's the most opinionated guy in the world He's the kind of person that's talking about what women should do, um, how he wouldn't take a certain lady if she has a certain amount of bodies on her and stuff. You know those kind of dudes, those kind of manosphere guys. Imagine being a manosphere guy and looking like this. Just imagine being a manosphere guy and turning up to work looking like that. Those Birkenstocks are legitimately struggling for life. Those Birkenstocks have been worked. Those are the Birkenstocks people put up on Vinted and they say have been worn lightly. Those have not been more than lightly. Those look absolutely crazy. To be honest to him, to be fair to the guy, I think he may have some kind of condition. You know, people have like thyroid issues. They kind of like balloon up really weirdly. So I don't think this is all just like him eating Wendy's and Popeye's and stuff. I'm pretty sure this is some sort of medical condition also. But let's put all that concern and all that sympathy to one side and just say categorically, this guy right this guy me i will never let myself get to that level i'm too vain i'm too self-absorbed um i have way too much of an ego and i love clothes too much to ever let myself get to a level where all i can wear are elasticated you know 4xl lakers jerseys like lakers shorts sorry and make them look like flipping booty shorts i couldn't do it i just couldn't do it and i also couldn't sit on a platform talking really with my chest about other people and criticizing them for what they do and laughing what they say when i look like any of these guys i just couldn't do it 
none of it will happen. I wouldn't have the confidence. I wouldn't have the base in my voice to talk about people if I know I look like this. It's just not going to happen. I don't know how people do it. I really don't know how they do it. I really don't know how people did do it. And to make matters worse, if that wasn't worse, again, we all have our little in inconsistency. No, we all have our deficiencies and we all have our issues. But have you heard how Flocko speaks? Should we play a little bit of it? Let's play so you can hear how this guy speaks. The uh, 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 um, diss tracks now. No, nah, it's not diss tracks. I'm like, we're going to see if we can respect each other the most. <laughs> so, oh, a compliment battle. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Is like I can't gonna get involved with the dis with the beefs, the oh, distracts, with the compliments. You already know what I could do out here in these streets. Completely disregarded, <laughs> right? Nah, listen. Like, do you want like those <laughs> shorts compliment your thighs? Listen, it really adds color to your eyes. Like the one thing that <laughs> that that I told everybody was, listen, I'm known to end rappers' career, <laughs> so. Like, if anybody mentioned my name in, in any kind of a diss track, or so even in, in like a diss song ever, yo, I, listen, like, it's gonna get call the cops. What's your track list look like? Or what's your body count look like? Whose careers have you ended? What, in terms of, uh, 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 in terms of rappers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, um, here, yeah, so like that. <laughs> One more time. Oh, uh, uh, in terms of rappers? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, um, here, yeah. So, like, that, that, that. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it, man. Honestly, big up Flacco, but he's always my Monday motivation. I see pictures of him and Wings of Redemption, and I think to myself, I've got to do some push-ups. I've got to do some burpees. I've got to run down the street. I can't be looking the way that I'm looking right now. God almighty. Thank you for keeping me honest in life. Anyway, moving on from that one, let's check out what D. Trump. Let's check out what Donnie's saying. Donnie's fresh out of pen, you know, posted bail. You know, he kind of did a couple of push-ups in the gym, a couple of push-ups, sorry, in his cell, a couple of pull-ups on his bunk bed and whatnot, right? He used the ropes to do like lap pull downs and stuff, right? Right? Or in the gym and whatnot, looking kind of ripped, looking kind of yoked. And he's back out here, at press conference, talking about his experience. Let's see what, what Donald Trump had to say at the press conference regarding his appearance um, or regarding his appearance in court for that flipping crazy Stormy Daniels case that most likely is going to get thrown out. It's really a bad mood for the flipping Democrats to flipping try and pin him on this. It's going to definitely get thrown out and he's probably going to use it as a springboard to launch his campaign and revive it in any kind of meaningful way. So it's probably going to bite them back in the ass. But hey, it's entertaining to watch from afar. Let's see what Donald Trump has to say at his press conference. Let's see. Look, how redacted is that? Uh, do they have like fake motor club, sorry, um, MC, motorcycle club flipping uh, vest things on that say born to ride 45? What are they? Has Donald Trump got like an official motorbike club? What? Let me double check this. Donald Trump motorcycle gang. Is that a thing? What's that flipping shirt they've got? Oh, it is a thing. Donald Trump's biker force. No way. He's got a biker force. Bikers for Trump. So what gang are they in? What gang is that? Or is that just a, its own gang? Meet the vigilantes who patrol Trump's rallies. <laughs> really? Interesting. I remember... um. When I was, um, do you guys remember the show Sons of Anarchy? I was really into Sons of Anarchy, right? And obviously, like every other person out there, when you watch Sons of Anarchy, the first thing you want to do is buy your own motorbike. And you also, and then the second thing you want to do is get involved in a biker gang. And I immediately saw Sons of Anarchy, started watching loads of documentaries about biker gangs and checking out YouTube clips. And the things that I wanted to do was to be a Hell's Angel. I was like, I want to be a Hell's Angel. I want to be a Hell's Angel. And all it took was watching a couple of documentaries to figure out, oh, they don't actually like blacks. <laughs> That's why they have other, you know, motorcycle gangs that are predominantly black people, predominantly 
you know mexican predominantly you know whatever else country they're from like it's quite insane isn't it i didn't actually know that was a thing until i watched the documentaries i didn't know that there was a flipping um you know kkk angle to some of these motorcycle gangs. i just thought they were just vigilantes vagabonds um you know vagrants who just got on bikes and just wanted to like have some fun and rock out you know sniff some meth you know smash a couple of lot lizards and keep it moving i didn't know that they were flipping not liking blacks you know what i mean i didn't know it was that kind of race war it's flipping weird really really weird why hell's angels are like not admitting blacks i'm sure there's a black hell's angel out there there's always one person who kind of bucks the trend but that was a bit of a bummer i remember when i found it out i was like oh man i thought the hell's angels were like for everybody i thought everybody could be a hell's angel but unfortunately you can't unfortunately if you don't have the right menelin the right skin color they'll tell you you can't join you can't bloody join anyway let's go back to it President Donald J. Trump. Am I am I incorrect again? Maybe I'm I'm from the I'm from I'm not from the US. I don't actually see things day in day out. But am I incorrect in saying that? Is this the most press Trump has got since he's kind of announced he's running again or whatever it may be? I feel like he hasn't really been hitting the same. So maybe this trial and this case or whatever is actually going to do him the world of good if he actually wants to put himself back out there again. I feel like no one's really been paying attention to him as much as they are paying attention to him now. And he's kind of maybe recognizing the moment. Or oh, am I mistaken? I don't know. Come on, let's get to the speech. I love how he's purposely walking through the crowd so he can get all the flipping adulation and praise and shit. <laughs> Consummate showman. Okay, come on, allow the song. Come on, let's go. Hello, hello. Thank you. Save our country. God bless you all. Isn't that like a weird thing to say when you start a speech? Thank God bless you all. We have to save our country. <laughs> we have to save our country. And I never thought anything like this could happen in America. Never thought it could happen. The only That's the best thing I love about his, when he speaks. I never thought this could happen in the United States. I never thought that could happen. The little soft repeating of every, like, you know, um, important line that he thinks he's saying. Could happen in America. Never thought it could happen. <laughs> I love it. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. I just realized Trump also has that lisp from the fucking, from the teeth. The veneers. He also has that average slight, like he's speaking with a mouth guard or something. Oh man, more evidence I should just leave the flipping fake veneers and just get some Invisalign in it and get my flipping actual teeth bleached and cleaned and shit. Damn it. From the beginning, the Democrats spied on my campaign. Remember that? <laughs> they attacked me. With an onslaught of fraudulent He's attacking me, he's attacking me. They attacked me, they attacked me. <laughs> Everyone's getting attacked. <laughs> Investigations. Russia, Russia, Russia. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Impeachment hoax number one. Impeachment hoax number two. The illegal and unconstitutional raid on Mar a Lago, right here. The lying to the FISA courts. The FBI and DOJ relentlessly pursuing Republicans. The unconstitutional changes to election laws by not getting approvals from state legislators. The millions of votes illegally stuffed into ballot boxes and all caught on government cameras. And just recently, the FBI and DOJ in collusion with Twitter and Facebook in order not to say anything bad about the Hunter Biden laptop from hell, 
which exposes the Biden family as criminals and which, according to the pollsters, would have made a 17-point difference in the election result. And indeed, it's a lot less than that, like about 16.9. He's still calling election fraud. Fuck enough. Fair enough. He's not. He's dying on that hill, isn't it? Been in our favor, not my favor, our favor, because our country is. Been <laughs> <laughs> and we remember the 51 intelligence agents who said Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation. <laughs> Didn't exist. It was Russian disinformation. Remember that. Russian disinformation. by the FBI when they all knew that it wasn't Russian disinformation. And so much more. Our elections were like those of a third world country. And now this massive election. <laughs> third world country bad. America great, but it's going to hell. Hmm. Interference at a scale never seen before in our country. Beginning with the radical left. George Soros back prosecutor Alvin oh, Radical left. Who campaigned on the fact that he would get President Trump. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. This is a guy campaigning. You wanna get President Trump at any cost and this before he knew anything about me, didn't know a thing about me. He was campaigning. As it turns out, virtually everybody that is he doesn't know me. His case, including rhinos, He's attacking me. Democrats, <laughs> say there is no crime and that it should never have been brought. Never have been brought. Even people that aren't big fans have said they said this is not the right thing to do. It's an insult to our country as the world is already laughing at us for so many other reasons, like our open borders, our incompetent withdrawal from Afghanistan, where we left Afghanistan. citizens, $85 billion worth of the best military equipment in the world, lost 13 magnificent young lives and far too many to mention that are so badly hurt with the loss of arms and legs and facial obliteration <laughs> for most of any more details <laughs> in our country's history in my opinion then our give up on energy independence and even energy dominance we're going to be dominant within six months more than any other nation times two we had this all just three years ago our raging crime statistics if you look in Democrat-run cities, numbers the likes of which we have never seen before. The open threats by various countries of the use of nuclear weapons. Something never mentioned or discussed by outside nations during the Trump administration, and which could very well lead under the Biden administration's leadership to an all-out nuclear world war three can happen. <laughs> We're not very far away from it. Nuclear World War Three. okay. An economy that has been crippled by the biggest inflation we have seen in more than 60 years. And a military that I used to defeat ISIS. Is he, is he, he said it would take four years. Is he trying to encourage, scare, inspire, motivate? Like, <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> uh, to kill al-Baghdadi and Soleimani that has now gone woke at the top levels by trying to indoctrinate everyone down to the lowest ranking patriot. But now they have really stepped up their efforts by indicting the 45th president of the United States who received <laughs> 75 million votes, which is more than any sitting president in the history of our country. He's still going on about this election fraud. Election stolen. Jesus Christ, man. Fair play. District attorney in Atlanta who is doing everything in her power to indict me over an oh, yeah. absolutely perfect phone call. Free young fuck. Perfect. The, the one I made with the president of Ukraine. Remember, I kept, kept saying that's a perfect call. <laughs> this one was more perfect. 
<laughs> Nobody said, sir, you shouldn't say that. Many people are like, oh. uh, many people or hung up in disgust because of something Perfect phone call. said. Because nothing was said wrong. In fact, at the end of the Yeah, he, he does look older, in it? He sounds older even. Like he doesn't look as big. Maybe it's the weight loss. Maybe he's maybe he's he's on a Zempic as well. But he definitely looks older. Because that's one thing I had to kind of give the guy credit for. Like every other flipping president of the United States, whenever they went into office and whenever they came out, especially four years after, that that before after picture was always really really crazy. Especially Obama's, right? He looked really bright eyed and really fresh and young. And by the end of the first term loads of grays are happening he was looking really weathered and it's happened to other presidents also but trump was the first one you know four years later he looked exactly the same no stress no nothing no wrinkle zero he looked exactly the same like you could tell he wasn't really taking that job seriously at all but i guess father time you know catches up with all of us and now he's legitimately starting to sound old he's legit legitimately starting to sound tired and you know just not the same boisterous kind of a cocky um son of a bitch that we're probably used to he just you know life gets the best out of us we agreed to continue our conversation about election fraud and election fraud specifically in georgia he's still talking about this come on bro really people on the phone including lots of lawyers nobody found anything wrong <laughs> perfect call perfect call until a book promotion <laughs> many months later all of a sudden they say you know i remember making a call just look at that. This fake case was brought only to interfere with the upcoming 2024 election, and it should be dropped immediately. immediately. <laughs> then you have a radical left lunatic known as a bomb thrower. Who oh, who's that? Who's that? My people, day after day. A bomb thrower. Over the boxes hoax, you know the boxes hoax, as we call it. <laughs> Who's a bomb for us? Who's the fuck's that? everyone knows, I come under what's known as the Presidential Records Act, which was designed and approved by Congress long ago, just for this reason. Under the act, I'm supposed to negotiate with now. Who's the box thrower though? Who threw the boxes? So who's the bomb thrower? Who the fuck is that? Let me just Google on my phone. Trump bomb thrower. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Who's he talking about? The bomb thrower. <laughs> you can't just leave that out there and then not clarify who you're speaking about. Bomb thrower. Uh, Trump describes special counsel Jack Smith as a radical left bomb thrower. Okay, whoever Jack Smith is, RIP to you. National Archives and Records Administration, which as of this date is a radical left troublemaking organization that red flags the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights as dangerous and triggering. Can you imagine? This is what we have to deal with. And remember, this is meant to be a speech he's meant to be giving after being what? He's charged with using essentially campaign finances to pay hush money to Stormy Daniels. So after he beat, he didn't want to go in out and telling everybody that he beat, even though she's done it you know many many times he and he you know he's too cheap to pay it pay her from his own pocket so he took the campaign finances money and allocated it to her venmoed it over to her cash apped it you know r.i.p bob lee or whatnot over to her and that's why he's going through what he's going through so in an effort to defend himself he's talking about bomb throwing he's talking about syria he's talking about ukraine russia like this is expert level of flipping um you know just avoiding talking about what you should be talking about it's like what is this this is crazy misdirection but there is no criminality under the presidential records act that is not what it's all about we were negotiating in very good faith proper way in order to return some or all of the documents that i openly and in very plain sight brought with me to Mar-a-Lago from our beautiful White House, just as virtually every other president has done in the past. Bomb thrower. That's hilarious. When FBI and DOJ officials with narrow will. FBI. Yeah. Yeah. I told my lawyer to show them the FBI. very secure storage room in which they were locked. 
The FBI's sole request in writing was, could you please put another lock on the door? We immediately complied. It's a lot different than the Biden situation, isn't it? The next thing I know, we were raided by many gun-toting FBI agents who took whatever they wanted, including my passports and medical records. <laughs> Everybody was in shock. Nobody had ever heard of such a raid before. Can't even believe it. Who would think that that could happen today? Oh, they were ready before? Okay, I cool. I immediately thought of the Fourth Amendment that protects against unreasonable search and seizure. But they did it anyway because our justice system has become lawless. They're using it now, in addition to everything else, to win elections. Apparently, they're not looking at me through the view of the non-criminal Presidential Records Act. They came up with a new one. This is okay. a new one. And they're looking at me through the Espionage Act. Because that is that <laughs> of 1917, where the penalty <sighs> is death. Even though that has absolutely nothing to do with openly taking boxes of documents and mostly clothing and other things to my home, which President Obama has done, the Bushes have done, Jimmy Carter has done, Ronald Reagan has done, everybody's done. Back okay. Hillary Clinton got rid of 33,000 emails, and that was okay. But nobody's done it like Joe Biden. <laughs> This lunatic special prosecutor named Jack Smith, I wonder what it was prior to a change. What? Who others of his ilk say he is even worse than they are, is only looking at Trump, yet Joe Biden took massive amounts more documents, even removed many boxes to Chinatown. China? Believe that. Chinatown. From China. China. I guess they were banking on Hunter's expertise. And had <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Secured offices in Pennsylvania and strewn all over his garage floor where his now very famous Corvette is also stored. All over the floor, including classified documents. But that's okay. Perhaps most importantly, he has. 1,850 Is this guy out of breath just speaking? Which he He's breathing a lot in it. God damn, brother. But isn't that real obstruction? Is he out of breath just standing on the flipping pulpit talking? As president, I have the right to declassify documents. And the process is automatic if I take them with me. It's automatic. Declassify. Biden was vice president. He had absolutely... No right to declassify as vice president. He doesn't come under the non-criminal Presidential Records Act. He comes under the very criminal Federal Records Act, unfortunately for him, but it's not going to matter because they don't follow the law, which has very severe penalties. He had classified documents that he took while he was a senator, which is absolutely inexcusable. And other senators, including Democrats, are outraged. But he's not being harassed and hounded like the people who work for me are. I'm not going to lie, man. Victim Trump is not the Trump I wanted to hear now. This is kind of mad, bro. How the mighty have fallen. He's basically crying. <laughs> this is kind of wild. Not address any of the charges he's been charged with, really. Not really offering any real defense apart from leave me alone. I, I was a former president. Don't you know who I am? Very bizarre breathing in a lot looks kind of frail the the sparkles kind of gone from the guy in it he's not the same anymore man he's not the same guy he's kind of gone you know it's gone it's over trump is over but again the fans still love him they still think he's that guy so i guess it's fine but hey man i think the sparkles finally left the guy he was a, a what you call it a bigger than life character but it's over it's flipping over if ron DeSantis loses to him Whilst he's going through this case, he might just retire his whole career in it, to be completely fair. If somebody's going through that kind of allegation and still ends up winning, you know, you know, you know you are crap. Big up. Walk me to my truck, random show, episode number 97, part dos. Part dos. Part dos. So, I did get a copyright notice, but they didn't tell me what it was for. 
I can guess it was probably for that flipping Chief Keith Love Sosa edit at the beginning of the sh- of the Matt Rife comedy special. It was a bit of a remix. I thought maybe that's why I wouldn't get hit, and I should have possibly, I should have possibly, you know, anticipated it. But I just thought because it was an edit or something, and because it's on YouTube anyway, it would have been okay. But he probably licensed it, hence why he was using it. And when I was restreaming it, YouTube, you know, is a bit annoying, and it took me down. But it did actually tell me. It just said, hey, this is a copyright notice, but it didn't actually say on my studio or anything what it was for, but I think it's because of that. And I've got an email here that says, yeah, live stream copyright notice. Your stream was interrupted after copyright material is no longer streamed. Streams are automatically re-enabled. Okay, cool. So I could have, it could have continued on. I don't know why it stopped anyway. Really, really strange. It played the beginning, then it continued on. Strange. Yeah, big up Andre J. Appreciate you. Lopez. (laughs) <laughs> G-G-G-G-G Lopez actually G-G-G-G Lopez can we get that here Brendan Shaw Lopez does that come up is that such a thing someone have that clip here Lopez what is it is it Lopez let's see what have we got here we got Chronicles of CTE let's see that that's actually good. <laughs> this looks really funny look at a little bit when you type in Lopez look what look what you've got here Look at all these videos. Oh, it's a cringe compilation. Oh, let's see this. Which one should we check out first? Uh, let's see this one. What's this one about? With the question marks. And then we'll go back to flipping. Um, we'll go back to Matt Rife. Let's see what this one's about. Brendan, question mark, question mark. Scottish accent. Scotland. Scotland. Braveheart. Lightly. Yeah, that's right. Braveheart. Huh? William Wallace. Yeah. William Wallace. Tell him Scotland is free. Come on, do it. <laughs> That's Arnold Schwarzenegger. You right. <laughs> okay, bro. They don't have any Schwarzeneggers uh... in Scotland, dude. Okay, first of all. <laughs> That's a fact, dog. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen a black guy in Scotland. Uh, a black guy? What do you mean? <laughs> I know, ironically, that was a good joke. I hope you meant it as a joke because that was actually a really good joke, actually. Give Brendan some credit. That was a fucking good joke. Let's just rewind. That was a really good one. Uh, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. You right. <laughs> okay, bro. They don't have any Schwarzeneggers in Scotland, dude. Okay, first of all. That's a fact, dog. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen a black guy in Scotland. Uh, a black guy? What do you mean? I'm talking like they don't Austrians. have any... Austrians. Austrians. Austrians, dude. I'm just saying I've never seen a black guy in Scotland. Have you, have you been there? I know eight people who've gotten it. The worst was Michael Yo. <clears throat> but he came in sick i thought came in s- oh my god do you remember this when covid happened and joe rogan wouldn't stop shutting up about fucking michael yo his friend i think he's i think he's an asian comic right tall guy yeah i think he is kind of funny himself anyway and he got covid really bad early on and rogan could not stop shutting up because i guess he's fit and looks after himself so for rogan that just blew his head oh my god people that swing the kettlebells around and that do martial arts and take care of their body could get COVID. <gasps> what do you mean? Oh shit! Sorry about that. I had, uh, that was a burp and a, and a and a shock and a hiccup at the same time. Oh god, I might have nearly died there. I might. I actually nearly died. It was like burp. But yeah, do you remember that? Rogan would not shop about Michael Yo. Sick. He did. Yeah, the underlying health conditions. And came in sick and was flying. And he's so, half Asian. I don't think that. No, he's Asian. Oh, but I don't think that matters. Okay. There are any? Oh, yeah, uh... you hate Chinese people. <laughs> no, no, that's not. That's <laughs> I mean, oh, that, dude. No, no, what am I no, thinking? No. Not a big no. deal, no, bro. I don't like the Chinese There's a lot government. of cheat. The Chinese government. Oh. But wait, what, can I ask you? <laughs> he nearly saw his career flash before his eyes. There, didn't he? Looks over at Chin like. To this, what um is there any full-blooded Asian? Yeah, refresh that. There mm-hmm. you go. Oh, look at Mark right there. Damn, that, we yeah. cute. What's up, man? <laughs> oh, do you remember that? Do you remember when they did this? I think they did this 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 shoot for his hoodies. I think I remember watching this clip, and he didn't have uh he didn't take a picture of Chappelle. He just had B G R and himself on there, but no Chappelle. So you know you can read between the lines. But listen to his joke about Schwarzenegger's in Scotland, and you kind of get the drift. Really uh, Undeniable. Boy. Weird. My um, face ain't in there. <laughs> so, do we not get a? Do we not get Chappelle's face? Oh, you know what it is? Because the black background. Yeah. Oh, there you <laughs> oh, go. Oh my god, dude. No, he was sick. Because Kyle, what you were saying? 
<laughs> Kyle no, said, it's not my words. No, this is- <laughs> the back- background. Chappelle, man, the human, the human laughing track. The black Labrador, bro. He makes anybody feel nice and warm and cuddly. God, dude. <laughs> no, he was sick because Kyle, what you were saying. <laughs> Kyle no, said- it's not my words. No, this is a great fucking fight. Oh, yeah. Go, Rose. I have no idea who to root for, though, because I like Rose. Them. Both of them. They're both awesome. Okay. But Are you a communist? No, I'm not a communist. <laughs> you, you go for Rose. Uh, Shout out to Native Americans. But Native Americans have beautiful hair. You never see a bald Native American. That's a legit That's point. You know, uh, the only time you see them bald if they get scalped. You feel me? Ooh, what? Yeah. I don't remember what I was watching, but I fell asleep and had a dream that. And, I've, and then it started to resonate with me that there is a low-key thing going on between black people and aliens that and i wouldn't know about it and he, he you wouldn't know about it you know i think when you refer to aliens you mean mexicans he looks like a disc jockey on like a plantation dude he looks like he definitely and i don't know if he you know has ever had any slave i'm sorry but that's a brilliant insult he looks like a disc jockey on a salve on a on a plantation do you know how hilarious that is uh, to say that off the cuff like a dish jockey on a plantation. <laughs> uh. Yes. Oh, wow. All right. All right. Okay. I see where you're going with that. Oh, Listen, I, I know some bald fucking dudes are slanging dick out there. Look at Dana White, Rogan. Uh, that's it. Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely brilliant, man. Big up that channel. And then watch if I want to see this one. Chronicles of Heme Brendan CTE Show. Let's see what this is saying. Before we get back to... All right, let's get to it. Um, Oh, this is the Dolly clip, isn't it? A dolly. And then Chin (laughs) is confused. Everyone's confused. (laughs) This is a legendary clip. A dolly. Where do we begin? A little trolley, a oh, little no, tro- trolley tro- started. Trolley, I got it wrong actually. It's actually trolley. Started all this chaos. Um, oh, it's just you know, <laughs> it's kind of tough to decide where to start. However, you ever tried throwing a trolley, Chen? No, I don't know. What you're talking about actually <laughs> throwing a trolley. Is that what you said? <laughs> what? Co- Conor McGregor threw a trolley to a bus window. <laughs> Tell me you know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't know what a trolley fi- is. Do you know what a trolley... By the way, do you, do you know what a trolley is? Trolley. In the in the UK, a trolley is what you take to a supermarket. So imagine Conor McGregor, right, throwing a trolley they take to a supermarket through a bus window, like something like this. This is what we call a trolley in the UK. This. That's a trolley. All right. Oh, you call it a cart. Why is it a cart? <laughs> like a go kart. <laughs> Why do you call it a cart? <laughs> That's a weird name to call something that. What? A cart? It looks more like a trolley than it's a cart. Okay, a shipping cart, a shopping cart. <laughs> I think that sounds actually kind of redacted. A cart. So what? Because it resembles a go kart. That's why you call it a cart. But yeah, this is a trolley. Imagine Connor chucking one of these things through a bus window, like up and over. Don't get me wrong, I know he's strong, but that's still a lot to kind of throw through a window. So the fact that he kept saying Dolly, Dolly was hilarious. Man, I, is my brain not working right? I don't think you know I've heard of a trolley take before. This, take this round out, man. <laughs> Are you shitting me? I'm not kidding. Are you you shitting didn't see me? Conor McGregor throw a trolley through a window. I thought throw something. I don't know. But you saw you, you, you're aware of all this news, yeah? Yeah, yeah of course. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Wait, it, you're talking about a dolly. A dolly. Damn it, that's what I was What I say? A trolley. Oh my bad. What I say? <laughs> trolley, trolley. Oh no, dolly. Yeah, yeah, dolly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Zero background. That would be a protege. Aaron Pico would be a prodigy. Prodigy. Pro- yeah, prodigy. 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 You want to Aaron Pico would prodigy. be a prodigy. 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 Yeah, yeah. What they say? Zero background. That would be a proje. <laughs> that would be a proje. <laughs> Big up all my projes. Big up all my projes. Projes. 
Aaron Pico with Prodigy. Be a, prodigy. Pro, pro, yeah, Prodigy. Prodigy. Not prodigy. prodigy. Joanna Yonjenchek versus Rose Namanunez. How do you like that for pronunciation? Suck on them balls. I'm getting Jesus better. Um, now, if the Fertitas are involved, and the, they're the ones who got the UFC where it's at, they're a huge, if this is a big fight stew, company stew, the Fertitas are the meat and potatoes. Dana, don't get me wrong, he's the meat in there. He's definitely part of the, the delicious sauce, the delicious soup. The Fertitas are the the meat man they're the they're the nuts and the potatoes in there right so and this all just this big pile of i should say this big vat of stew this entertainment stew it, in all honesty i wanted a talk soup tosh.0 meets fighting i want that soup i want that big ass stew uh, is that how he wanted the show to be below the belt was a tosh.0 talk soup type of show with mma in it and now it's just him sitting down necking tins of rain and trying to not throw up in his mouth how the mighty have fallen Stu, that no one's doing the entertainment era in boxing is not there it's it's not the time there yet Floyd was kind of the paper boy of that, right? He was the face. He, like, when I when I go to the comedy store, I do most of my regular sets in LA at the comedy store, get ready to go on the road to shoot my special. I do a lot of sets at the comedy store. store. Let me talk to this doctor over here. Now we have an epidemic. Now we got Vitor Epidemic. Bell- <laughs> epidemic. <laughs> it's not my bad. It's not an epidemic. It's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. <laughs> no, you're right, though. But now- for her, that's, that's fire for the fuel. So for her, I think... <laughs> fire for the fuel. <laughs> Fuel for the fire. Fuel for the fire. <laughs> she's gonna, yeah, she's gonna use that. Well, they have more people. My wife's in Istanbul right now. They yeah. said Turkey, bro. Earlier yes. said Turkey. Istanbul. When I was in the uh, say Istanbul. Oh no, you hear that? My wife is in Istanbul right now. He said, "I thought you said Turkey." Don't get me wrong. I know they say Americans aren't good at geography, but God Almighty. My wife is in Istanbul right now. I thought you said Turkey. <laughs> My wife is in Copenhagen right now. I thought you said Denmark. <laughs> Holy shit. She's going to, yeah, she's going to use that. Well, they have more people. My wife's in Istanbul right now. They yeah. said Turkey, bro. Earlier yes. you said Turkey. Istanbul. When I was in the Sahara, Nevada. Sierra Nevada. Sierra Nevada. The Sierra Nevada. Sierra. The Sahara is a desert. Oh, that that camera's good. Sahara Nevada is a great, a great amalgamation. It? It's a great flipping blending of the names. The Sahara Nevada. We come back like a goddamn shark white's nose. Just fucking weather. Shark white. There, there's gonna be shirt. fucking all sorts of crazy oh, marks shit. on it. He screwed up dick. his words. He's so excited about it. <laughs> yeah. What I say? You got it. He's come back with a shark white's nose. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude. Oh, great white. It's my fifth show in two days. It's the beast. I know, I know. Yeah. You know how long does it take Floyd May? It's my fifth. You see a little put down. He doesn't like getting corrected. It's my fifth show in two weeks or in two days. Show in two days. Like, shut the fuck up. Peace. I know, I know. Yeah. You know, how long does it take Floyd Mayweather to get used to this weird, awkward style of Mayweather? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> this edit is brilliant. How does he get used to the edit? The guy's looking at him like, this guy gets paid way more than me, is way more famous, and he doesn't even know where he is right now. <laughs> He's just looking at him thinking, how is this guy the a guest to here like how is this guy where he is right now he doesn't even know where he is does this guy even know his own name <laughs> he's looking at him like what the fuck is going on here how does floyd what kind of what, what is it to get used to this weird awkward style of mayweather okay does that make sense yeah Uh. Comic, funny guy. It's starting out. I don't know. Very funny dude. Um, <laughs> I've never else? heard these names ever in my life. Yeah. Um. 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 um, um. Oh, uh, Court, Court, Cortland, who did our. See. This summer. Doing
Look at the budget Showtime used to do, man. Look at the, sh- the Showtime budget. Outfits, you know, boom mics type of thing, extra lighting. The little boards where you say action. And he fucked it up, bro. Fucked it up. To promote and sell a fight. It is not rocket scientists. No, it is kind of mem- memorizing, I couldn't right? believe it. Yeah, mesmerizing. mesmerizing. And, and memorizing. Yeah, but it, isn't it? Cra- it's kind of weird. And there was a fight where he did get he did get taken down. He lost in a draw. Uh, yeah. I struggle sometimes with spelling as a kid. Do you really? I can see that. Not dude. anymore, though. Well, you're <laughs> hey, bro, you have the mullet. So you have <laughs> yeah, mullet. So, yeah. um, but I used to think uh, giraffe was giraffe. Oh, I thought it was spelled with a D yeah, dude. until I was about 23. No, giraffe's a black dude, bro. Uh, now I know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I thought it was giraffe. That's a real story. <laughs> That's an insane thing to even admit. I think I'd go to the grave with that, honestly. I think I'd go to the grave with that. That I used to think giraffe was spelled with a D. What? This guy graduated with like two degrees, didn't he? Like he's a double major. Allegedly. Like, why would you even admit that? <laughs> I'll just go to the grave with that one. That's like, that's like, uh... no, I'm not going to say that because I want to go to the grave with it. <laughs> I thought it was a giraffe. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> Fuck dude. you, public education. They let me slide. Giraffes, boy. No one ever said anything. Look at them forcupines over there, <laughs> son. You know what I'm saying, boy? Them horses are crazy. Dude, bro. I just got this golden retriever right here. <laughs> I got all the fucking mammals. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was giraffe for the longest <laughs> until my friend Shane Carwin, who's the educated man, went, you know it starts with a G, right? I went, shut the fuck up. <laughs> he goes, I swear. I went, wow. Dude. I have a college education, two degrees. No one ever said shit. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, that was fucking incredible. Big up the giraffes the out there. Big up all the homeless dats out there. You know what I mean? Big them all up big damn all up anyway do you know what time it is 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 it's andrew tate time have you ever watched best score Best gore is like all these videos of the terrible things happening in the world. People getting their heads chopped off or like drug cartels chopping people up with chainsaws or people getting shot in the face and all that kind of stuff. I watch all these things and I don't watch them because I'm some kind of sicko. I watch them to try and desensitize myself. Because imagine one day you're sitting in Paris, you're sitting there having a fucking coffee and terrorists roll through with AKs and the person next to you has their brains blown out. You're going to stand there and be like... <laughs> waiting to die like a motherfucker I'm gonna be like bang oh I've seen that before okay boom boom duck and dive in take one terrorist out next to the AK go Rambo take out all the fucking Pakistan with a G I don't- what? he said Pakistan <laughs> honestly Andrew Tate and Gary B has the same thing Gary B has this thing about his family dying let me see that clip why do all these guys have this fantasy of picturing their family members dying and that's like a way to train their mind to, to harden themselves so they not they don't they're not pussies and shit and they can be tough. I swear Gary V has the same thing about his family dying. I swear. They all have the same weird fantasy about picturing someone they love being murdered in front of them and then it toughens them up like I mean it's like um alright I guess so. Let me see this. Uh Gary V family dying or something. Let me see if I can get it. Is it one motivation? Yes, it's shot in the face. Someone's got it. Okay, cool. I knew it. I knew I wasn't the flipping only one that knows. I knew it. I knew it. Here's here we go. Here it is. Right? This is uh, Gary V talking about his motivation. It sounds oddly similar to flipping um <laughs> Andrew Tate. Let's see how it's to say here. Gary V motivation. Come on, let us know what your motivation is, Gary V. Tell us, Mr. Vaynerchuk. Tell us. Tell us now. Please let us know. Who's, who do you love the most in the world? My family. Good. Who in your family? Pick one. All of them. 
<laughs> Every day, make in the in like literally once a day, genuinely sit there for five minutes and make pretend one of them got shot in the face. <laughs> I'm being dead serious with you. Every single day, I actually sit and truly try to convince myself one of them got shot in the face. That is the biggest thing I do that leads to the biggest happiness I have. What? <laughs> why did it have why did it all have this obsession? Why did it have, No, it's not a parody. This is real life. This is what Gary V thinks about himself. <laughs> why did they all have this obsession? Please. Someone tell me, why did they all have this obsession about being shot in the face? Honestly. This is probably another one that probably speaks about it. Let's see. Okay, this is, this is him in four. In four. This is the whole thing in four. Oh my God, man. God, I love Gary Vee. This is the whole thing in four. I mean, it's so much more like easier to say like oh it's just perspective but like on the daily when things are happening and i don't know you're in the middle of doing something let's say for your business Who's, who do you love the most in the world my family good who in your family pick one all of them <laughs> <laughs> you're very politically correct cool every day make in the in like literally once a day genuinely sit there for five minutes and make pretend one of them got shot in the face I'm being dead serious with you. Every single. <laughs> I preferred it when these entrepreneur type guys just told you to like stop drinking coffee, cut off your Netflix, um, you know, buy my course, do this drop shipping. That was that was still bullshit, but at least you know you could buy into that dream a little bit. Thinking that picturing seeing your mum's face get blown off in front of you would somehow make you into being a uh you know a hard and flipping entrepreneur and will get you from making like 30 grand a year to 100 grand a year it's absolutely insane i love it single day i almost i said this today earlier i probably once a week to four times a week sit there truly in the shower on a flight <laughs> when i wake up some people meditate right some people work out right to deal with whatever anxiety while I'm doing push-ups and shit and doing my horrible kettlebell swings and squatting in the gym and doing my overhead presses, Gary Vee's in his room thinking about his kids getting kidnapped and sent, you know, away somewhere wherever Madeline McCann is or something. Absolutely incredible. These are thoughts I have. I actually sit and truly try to convince myself that I have lost one of the five most important people in my life and that is the biggest thing I do that leads to the biggest happiness I have. Like, what? You didn't sell enough earrings today? Like seriously though, people lack perspective. It, it's actually remarkably easy if it, became, if it becomes the way you see the world. Like what? What? Like we have completely lost perspective as a society. Do you know how many people on earth have it way worse than you? Billions. Anyway, big up Gary V, man. Absolutely legendary clip. <laughs> Absolutely legendary. <laughs> oh, man. And then, of course, my favorite, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite. This is my favorite Gary V. Sorry, this is my favorite Andrew Tate clip of all time. Then we'll go back to Matt Rye for a bit. This is my favorite Andrew Tate clip of all time. I swear on my life. I watched this so many times. I swear it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is funny i swear when you get away from all the you know people trafficking and shit the guy's a legit comedian listen to andrew tate here i recently posted a question on twitter asking <laughs> would you rather have sex with a transsexual which is a legitimate 10 or a woman which is <laughs> It's already started up good, please. One. Please, please, please. Love, I recently love. posted a question on Twitter asking, would you rather have sex with a <laughs> transsexual, which is a legitimate 10, or a woman, which is a legitimate 1? And everyone's sitting there clicking woman, 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 because they think they're going to be gay if they do anything else. But they're not actually <laughs> thinking about the question. I am so smart. I operate on so many levels higher than the average man. You people are not thinking about the question. 
When I say a one and a ten, I mean <laughs> Megan Fox with a dick. That's the tranny. Or Hulk Hogan with a pussy. That's the girl. This is the question I'm asking. <laughs> Megan Fox or Hulk Hogan? You're thinking, well, I don't want to be gay, so... Uh, just, uh, quit. C categorically, I'm taking Megan Fox. <laughs> Let's just take that. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, the number one, did it? You're gonna fuck Hulk Hogan? Okay, yeah, there's a pussy, but he's got mustache and muscles and shit. He's all hairy, big dude, six foot five. It's pretty gay to me. That sounds pretty gay. I don't care if it's a pussy. That is gay. Whereas Megan Fox, okay, he's got a dick, but maybe you can like scoot it out the way. I'm still Megan Fox. You know what I'm saying? At least she's small and shit. You can get your hand around her neck, mess her up. You ain't messing up Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan's gonna mess you up. So this is the question I'm asking. You need to operate on a higher plane. Think about this. This is important. No, nah, I'm alright. but I'm good, brother. I'm this good. This affects the world we now live in. What is straight? What is gay? It's all a big sliding spectrum, isn't it? Because if you're gonna sit here and go, oh, no, no, it's gay to bang Megan Fox with a dick. I counter that argument. It's gay to bang Hulk Hogan with a pussy. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's like, he's so sure. I love the face too. He's so sure of himself. Look at this fucking get up. Look at this. Have you ever seen a man who wears a shirt like this, who buttons it like at his waist so that it opens up at the top like some sort of rose? <laughs> like his chest is a human bouquet. Like... <laughs> Oh, this is, this is an alpha male. This is an alpha male. <laughs> Honestly, what an absolute legend. Like, I don't even know how that flipping thought experiment entered his fucking head. Oh, God almighty, mate. What a thought. What an incredible thought experiment. They're calling him the Oppenheimer of comedy. Oh, mate, that's incredible. Actually, before we go back to Matt Rife. I'm actually going to, I want to I wanna rewatch the first five minutes of Gringo Pappy because I'm convinced Brendan Schaub is better than Matt Rife. That's my hot take of the day. Brendan Schaub is better than Matt Rife. I don't care what you guys say, but I'm convinced he's better. Brendan Schaub, Gringo Pappy, because this Matt Rife thing has been flipping crazy. Gringo <laughs> Pappy. I'm going to watch the first five minutes because that first 15 minutes we watched from Matt Rife, I didn't find it funny at all in the slightest. So I'm going to watch the first five of my tissue. Should we get my tissue first? <laughs> and then we're gonna see if so. I don't believe that Matt Rife is that much better than the fucking Gringo Pappy. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'm sorry, I do not believe it. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. So let's see. Watch. Wow, look how much I watched of it. I actually watched quite a lot of it when it first came out, didn't I? Look at that. Look at that. That's a real that's a real fan. Look at that. I watched quite a bit of it, didn't I? Let's see. But let's see the first five minutes of it. Compared to him. Because I've got a feeling this guy, this kid's kind of overrated. So, we left it. Oh, I left it flipping that. Wow, he's got timestamps. Bro, fuck. He's got timestamps on his comedy special. Okay, cool. Let's go to the front. Let's go to the first five. Bro, Ted, man. He did a 25-minute comedy special, and there's an intro of one minute. So, essentially, it was 24 minutes comedy special. Cool. Let's see this. First five minutes of Gringo Pappy. Let's see how that compares to um, Matt Rife's special, because I've got a feeling these guys are on the same sort of level. Where's Matt Rife's leg? Where is he? Uh, no, no, he's up there. Is that him there? Nope. Nope, nope, I think it's over here, right? Wait, there we go, Matt Rife. Cool, let's bring him over here. Let's have it in the same spot. Boom, bang, boom, it's there, isn't it? Boom, let's go over here. Okay, so Matt Rife is there, Gringo Pappy's there. Let's see, it's about five minutes. I bet you it's better. I think some of you guys misremembered how brilliant this fucking special was. Let's see this. Come on, Brendan, remind them of your greatness. Remind them, remind them. <laughs> See, first joke, killer already, killer already. <laughs> dicey, dicey. First joke, smash it already. 
Look how happy he is. <laughs> it's even better that we know now that according to according to BGL, now we know this is the really crazy part of it. According to BGL on that interview that he did, I think with um the guy from MMA Holes, I think it was that, but BGL said something, or maybe it was on the subreddit. He said that Brendan thought this special was going to be the one that was going to send him to the stratosphere. This was the one that was going to finally get him to do theatres and stuff. That's how delusional that man is. He legitimately thought that Gringo Pappy was his meal ticket, like, you know, to flipping stardom. Like he was going to be undeniable now when the Gringo Pappy came out. That's what makes a Gringo Pappy even way funnier than what it actually is. The fact that he was that delusional. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's play this. I love you, Texas. That's how it is. I love it. I love it. There's always one guy. No fucking way, bro. <laughs> that needle's not touching this fucking temple, daddy. <laughs> As he says, he's taking a nacho, dipping a nacho cheese. For the... <laughs> oh, my bad, Mr. Whole Foods. My bad. <laughs> This whole vaccination stuff, I'm not anti-vax, man, I'm vaccinated, but it's, uh, it's all in their marketing. They fucked this whole thing up in their marketing. Without Operation Warp Speed, when they mm. launched that, remember they're trying to get everybody to get vaccinated? And they're like, yeah, go to Krispy Kreme, buy a dozen donuts, get vaccinated. Like, <laughs> the fuck? That makes sense. <laughs> Fat people are like, hell yeah, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so confusing. I remember I called my mom. I was like, hey, mama, are you, uh, are you getting vaccinated? She's all, I wasn't. And then, you know, I love donuts. You recorded this. Oh, shit. <laughs> you thought this is a comedy special. I can't believe this, man. Do you remember the first legend. dumbass that messed it all up for everybody? Scared the shit out oh, of him from getting legend. vaccinated. I remember that idiot? Call. He's all over the news stations. The first moron to get that Johnson & Johnson. Right? Clearly a meth addict. They just, <laughs> nobody checked into his background. Man, that they put him on the news. He's sweaty as shit. He was on all the major broadcasts. He's like, "Holy shit, dude!" <sighs> yeah, I got it done. I got that Johnson Johnson, bro. I don't feel good, bro. I can't stop sweating, bro. I feel like I'm going wings. Bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay low for a little bit on the vaccination. I'm just gonna. Remember that moron? It's all in marketing, man. Like, they need to hire some just a dime piece actor we've never heard of. Just blast them all over the news, right? Just somebody who's fine. Get them on there and just put them all over the news, all over the nation. Like, I, yeah, dude, I got the Johnson Johnson. I feel pretty good. I feel great, actually. If I'm being honest, one side effect, if I, I just want to be up front with everybody. Goddamn dick's down to here. <laughs> just like, You'd have a line of bros at CVS just like, just trying to do my part, man. Just fucking. <laughs> five minutes in yet? It's good to be in Dallas, man. Three you guys minutes. doing it right. Okay, two it's minutes good left. to be in Dallas. I know. Two minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. Two minutes left. There's a reason I decided to shoot my special here, man. You guys just give me so much love. I absolutely love Texas, man. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I uh, I haven't touched a mask since I touched down. It is fantastic. <laughs> LA um, is not like this, y'all. A what? A mask? Did you say a mask or mask? Mask? What was that? Yeah, thank you, thank you. I uh, I haven't touched a mask since I touched down. Jesus Christ, Brendan Shaw. Mask, mass. It is fantastic. <laughs> LA is not like this, y'all. LA is North Korea with a beach. <laughs> but they give us Wi Fi, so that's cool. They're talking about locking us back down. I can't go through another lockdown. Straight up, my, the shop household barely made it through the last one. We eat our way out of that last one. We did not do well with it. Also, Dallas, my lockdown's different. I got a five year old and two year old. Parents know what I'm talking about. I would rather do anything else than be locked down with those fucking demons 24 7. <laughs> We're not even locked down. My girl was fighting with me the other week. If we get locked down, we're fucked. 
She was fighting with me. Fight, nye, 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 fouty, nye, nye. Why is she speak? Why is she? Why is she speaking so fast? The lack of breaths and pausing and the, it's the, the pace is so frenetic. Like, I wonder if this was baddies and Addie's time. Do you reckon this is BGL's fault? Do you reckon this is BGL's fault? Do we have BGL to blame for this? BGL was the one that was lacing his drinks with Addie's. So he was just like, Rah. he can't pronounce words anyway. Then he's rushing and he's probably nervous because he's recording his comedy special. That's meant to be half an hour. That's actually 24 minutes and 21 seconds long when you take out the intro. <laughs> God almighty, man. Take a breath, brother. Delta, Nina Mass, Nina. What are we going to do? Nina, Nina, I'm saying myself, oh my God. My life would be so much easier if I was just gay as shit. <laughs> If I was locked down with the bros, Dallas? One more minute. Quarantine with the homies? You know how much more fun we would have? Oh my God, dude. We'd like play video games all day. We'd work out. At night, we'd fuck each other. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was all, what the fuck? No. I, I thought we were gonna play video games, bro. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I love that. No, fuck no, I'm not into that, dude. I'm not. I don't want to be locked down with you anymore. I just. <laughs> Let's be honest now. Five minutes has gone by. How much funnier is Matt Rife than Brendan Schaub? Take away your bias, right? Take away your bias. Take away your bias. I'm actually gonna put. I'm actually gonna do a poll here because I think some of you guys are lying because that Matt Rife guy isn't funny. I don't care what anyone says here. Um. Uh. Let's see. Um, if you so yeah, uh, if you had to watch the last, no, is it? Uh, if yeah, if you could only watch one, whoops, one stand-up special. <clears throat> If you can, if you can only watch one side of the who would you go for? Yeah, who would you choose? Yeah, if you, yeah, if you can only watch one, yeah, da, 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 who would you choose? Uh, Papa or Matt Rife? Be honest, right? Be honest. No lies in the fucking chat. Be honest with this poll. If you could only watch one stand-up special, who would you choose? Or who would you watch? Who would you do? Who would you watch? Or who would you, who would you choose? Doesn't matter. Who would you pick? No lies, okay? I want to hear what the community says here. No lies from the community. Let's see. Papa or Matt Reif? Let me know in the poll. Do, 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 Watching, watching, watching. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> See how close it is. Look how close it is. It's fifty four forty seven percent. It's neck and neck. <laughs> okay, fifty three percent for Matt Rife, forty seven percent for Papa. Ra Ted Brent C I told you we already told you. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't want am I back now? Am I back here? Am I back? Am I back? Can you hear me? Am I back? Am I back here? If you can hear me, let me know. If you can hear me, let me know. Am I back? Yeah, I'm back now. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I think Matt Reif struck me, struck me down, mate. Matt Reif struck me down. He struck me down. He doesn't want me to flip in, you know, have. He doesn't want me to have an audience with Matt Reif. No more at Matt Reif. Matt Reif is off the menu. Matt Reif is off the menu. He's taking me down. He struck me down. He said no more pocket pussies for me. No more pocket pussies. <laughs> we were just getting to the main chunk of his stand up special where he was going through red flags. After complaining about girls on first dates, talking about astrology, like pure fuckboy jokes, man. Absolutely terrible. 
anybody in that in that poll who voted for flipping Matt Rife, you has you should have you should you should hold your head in shame. Honestly. Like Brendan is way, way better than that guy, man. That guy is absolutely terrible. I don't care I don't care what anyone says. He's terrible. He's garbage. Absolutely garbage. Maybe he's the kind of guy you have to see in person, but that was shocking. That was legitimately shocking. Wow. Oh my god. That was so bad. So bad. And it's the ir- the irony of him being the worst and also being so on it with the flipping striking down, right? It's absolutely hilarious too. That doesn't but the you know, that doesn't flip in um I don't miss that one at all. That's hilarious, you know? Horrible comedy, but quick to take it down. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. <laughs> oh, this stream is interrupted. They didn't want me to have it, mate. They didn't want me to have it. They didn't want me to have the stream. They want to take me down. Take me down. Anyways, uh, moving on, moving on. So, let's talk about this one. Have you guys seen this? This looks like it's... What's his face? Who's that guy's name again? This looks like uh, Anthony Cumia maybe being a little bit racismo to Bill Burr and his wife. Let's do a... Um, I think this is an old clip. I think this is old, right? I just saw this on Joe Rogan's sub, but I think this is old, where he complains. I think him and Bill Burr have beef, right? But let's see what he says. This is Anthony Cumia moaning and whinging about Bill Burr. Let's see this. I think this is old, though. People that are uh, uh, watching and remember what I was doing yesterday after the show, uh, going to see Jimmy Norton at the Big Black Pussycat. Loved it. Loved Jimmy. uh, Hugged my good friend Jimmy Norton. I love him. And uh, we are inseparable. Uh, Had a few drinks. Had a few drinks. Went over to the Comedy Cellar, which of course is the iconic comedian of new york gathering place now last night or the night before last actually was the patrice o'neill benefit the patrice o'neill benefit uh i was at a couple of them until well i became something called persona non grata i think that's latin or French, something like that. But I am persona non grata, and uh, I was not invited back. And it was a personal thing between uh, Bill Burr. No offense, but this this nigga's ugly. God damn it, bro. And me and Bill's wife, and uh, not as sordid as I just made it sound. But um, so I go to the cellar. And I think Amy Schumer was there, too. I saw her walk in. I think she went right downstairs. And her security guy. Now, who is Amy Schumer's security guy? Garrett? Cake boss? Ginger ale Joe? Close. Close. (laughs) Club soda Kenny. There you go. Club Sota Kenny. He's kind of got that menacing look of like he always plays like the villain in a in a movie or in a TV series, like the evil villain. He kind of reminds me of the actor, you know, the actor in Yellowstone. No, the actor in um, nineteen twenty three, the prequel to Yellowstone, one of the prequels, where there's this guy who plays like the kind of enemy of like the Duttons. He's like this cowboy. He's kind of got like a weathered face. I think he's in Game of Thrones also. He kind of reminds us. He's got. He's kind of got that face of, the, of those kind of villainy type looking guys. He's always up to no good. Never be trusted. Wow. He spits on his own floor. I never understood that. So Kenny walks in. Ew. Amy is in front of him, so he probably couldn't see much of the club. <laughs> Big fat ass, I mean, get it? So uh, I go, I go, Kenny, Kenny. He looks at me, turns his head, and keeps walking. And I keep going, Kenny, Kenny. Nothing. Totally ignored. Totally ignored. 
Well, he's a security guy, and I get that part of it. Being security for somebody should not make you obligated to despise the people that your client despises, should it? Especially if you've had a relationship over the course of the years, a very close relationship. I many times was his client. I was mostly a, a, a Keith the Cops client, but Kenny was mostly like Opie's client. Uh, or Opie's uh, uh, security guy. Uh, so I'm just like, all right, look, I even got that. I got it. Amy, Amy does not like me at this point. I bashed the shit out of her as well we all should. She's a Schumer for fuck's sake, like Chuck Schumer. She bashes uh, our, our Second Amendment right. So I, I, I was like, okay, no big. I'm having a few drinks. And as I had brought up prior, the uh, the Patrice O'Neill benefit was the night before. And people are still in town. Now, who, who, but I love quizzing the booth. Who puts on the Patrice O'Neill benefit every year? Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Well, if Bill Burr's in town and all these comics that did the show, they're in town. Where would they go in New York City? A familiar place where they came up and the comedy cellar in New York City. So Bill Burr comes in and I'm sitting there. I see Bill and I'm not going to be a faggot it was bill burr by the way it was not someone that looked like bill burr that i took a picture of or a video and didn't talk to or attempt to have some words with i did attempt to have some words with bill burr i was going over there to be sincere to try my best to as uh as Bobby Kelly said, bury this shit with Burr. Bobby Kelly told me that. He goes, could you bury this shit with Burr? So I'm like, look, we're both here. Let me bury this shit with Burr. I'll try it. I walk up to the table. Look out. Uh, he's sitting down. I, I kind of uh, used a chair to put my knee on to get on a, a level. I said, Billy, how, what's up? How you doing? Uh, uh, Dan! Who? Now I'm starting to think maybe this was not the best move. His dude wasn't dude. It was dude. Like, like when he talks about white women, <laughs> just disdain in his voice. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad Bill Burr kept. Fucking... I'm glad Bill Burr kept the same energy, mate. That's why Bill Burr's my flipping OG. That's why he's my dog. That's why I flip and listen to his podcast on a weekly basis. He's the G. Rip, 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 respect to Bill Burr. Been talking to me after the shit you said about my wife. Hey, Bill. First of all, the fans are the ones that kicked that whole fucking thing off. Never said, well, I didn't get that much out before. Now, let me think. Let me ask the booth. Probably should have punched him, mate. Who else does Club Soda Kenny do security for? Jim Norton. Jim Norton. Very good. But I had seen Jim prior to that and spoken to him, and he was great. Funny fuck show. He's one of the loves of my life, Jim Norton. So that wasn't really an issue that he's done security for that. Now we have talked, Amy Schumer, she was in, I guess she was downstairs doing a, a set or something. And someone else that Club Soda Kenny does security for. It can't be Opie. No, he had <laughs> done security for the great Greg Opie Hughes beer show. Watch it on 
Opie Radio. He's showing his face now and stuff. I know. Yeah. I guess ever since uh, uh, Alex uh, uh, Stein uh, did uh, presented him, uh, he's now like, okay, I could show my face. Yeah. I saw him in a restaurant, um, <laughs> actually at a bar just prior to this. Uh, pop up um, Anthony Cumia uh, Twitter and look at maybe the last post, something like that. I saw Opie, and again, I was too much of a fag to walk up and say hi. But once again, there he was. I saw him at the bar. 1998, Greg Opie Hughes was at the bar I was just at. And again, I... So you saw him at the bar and you snuck a picture of him instead of going to say hi. I'm such a faggot, I didn't have the balls to go up to him like I did, you know, Bill Burr at the cellar. Uh-oh, I think I just gave it away. Club Soda Kenny does security for Bill Burr. So when I was up there t chatting, trying to bury this shit with Bill Burr, his security guy... Club Soda Kenny quite literally threw me out of the comedy cellar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He uh, chest bumped me uh, out of the fucking place. Love it. Love it. I was not worthy <laughs> to <laughs> bury the shit with Bill Burr. And by the way, that's why I never tried to bury the shit with Bill Burr. In my drunken haze last night, it seemed like a good idea. Bobby Kelly echoing in my head, you got to bury the shit with Burr, dude, and get a bandolier. Kenny, the guy I fucking spent years with <laughs> as one of our security guys. <laughs> chest bumped me physically was doing removed his job. me didn't even surprise security guard does his job <laughs> nicely be like listen man you gotta no. just no. straight to physical go 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 now you fuckers know when i'm drunk you cunts know i'm a magnanimous fucking dick face i'm kidding see that's part of the joke i don't get drunk and belligerent i'm not a belligerent guy a Press X for doubt. Press X for doubt. Especially when I'm trying to bury shit. I don't go, I didn't go, uh, look, Billy Burr, uh, man DeLorean, but probably woman DeLorean, faggot DeLorean. Oh, that sounds like pure and utter hate. Wow. That sounds like Eric Griffin level bitterness, bruv. Jesus Christ, Anthony Cumia. In anything but man did didn't do that. And then I was physically removed by Club Soda Kenny. Dude, I'm beside myself. Look. I'm beside myself. Just thinking. This has been on my mind. That this fucking guy, who we supported, <laughs> paid. He's more offended that a former security guard who actually works as a security guard for other people now and isn't his security guard and isn't his friend didn't treat him like a friend and instead treat him like a security guard. He's more offended at that than Bill Burr telling him to go get the fuck out of here. Love it. And enjoyed the company of for years. I was just another piece of shit in the way yeah. of one of his paychecks. It's called having a job <laughs> and doing your job really well. <laughs> I was just another piece of garbage that needed to be removed because his paycheck might have been uh, getting upset. Big up Club Soda Kenny, by the way, wherever you are right now. I hope you're having all the club sodas and I hope you are booked and busy, my friend. You do, clearly, you do a great job. Clearly, you take your job seriously and clearly you're good at it because the great Bill Burr hired you and you got this trash out of the club. Big up. That I would dare try to bury that shit with Bill Burr. 
I am fucking disgusted. <laughs> fucking disgusted. Fuck Bill Burr up his fucking ginger black wife ass. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Fuck Club Soda <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> I don't know what to say about him. I, I'm not I haven't been mad at him long enough Jesus to come up with anything Christ. I could say. He's a pedophile. He's gone flat. Yeah, yeah. I'll come up with something. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. And Keith Robinson sitting across, not saying shit. With all the help and support I give the black community. Will Rogan step in and say something? Will he ignore it? And just hope it goes away. Will Kumia come back on the JRE very soon? And they'll act like nothing happened. Tune in next time on another episode of the JRE Extended Universe. <laughs> where drama abounds and talent is lacking. <laughs> Holy shit, man. These guys are redacted. 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 Absolute redacted. Anyway... Last video here I want to check out is this very interesting video that I need to pull up here, if I can get a hold of it, that features a few people from the Legion of Skanks or the actual Legion of Skanks crew discussing um, their confusion as to why their fans and fans of the, you know, of the much heralded and loved Brendan Schaub are not too enamored about the thought of legion of skanks inviting said brendan Shaw to legion of skanks and um i've spoken about it on my live stream i've made my feelings kind of clear on the subject i essentially think um what's his face um, what's the guy's name again um lewis j gomez is essentially clout chasing that's what it feels like to me it feels like he is um incredibly um so it feels like he's incredibly desperate to get the love and respect from rogan because it appears like to me and many outsiders looking from the outside in that ever since the last Legion of Skanks appearance on the JRE, Rogan has made it very clear who he prefers from Legion of Skanks. And because there's only three of them, it's easy to see who he likes and who he doesn't like based on who he's invited back onto his show. And he's invited Dave Smith back onto his show as a solo guest. And he's also invited big j okus onto his show just recently with irish affair but lewis j gomez hasn't stepped foot hasn't stepped foot back in that flipping austin compound ever since the last appearance and people are speculating we don't really know why it is what it is but it's clear that joe doesn't like lewis j gomez much and my opinion is lewis j gomez is trying really hard to flip in you know clout chase and get on flipping you know uh, get on rogan's radar by essentially doing good by brendan and he maybe hopes in the back of his mind maybe if he pulls in a decent episode where he has rogue where he has brendan laughing at himself he has people in the audience you know coming around to him and thinking he's a good guy and maybe doing the whole whitney cummings a skank fest thing there where maybe he looks like he doesn't match or blend with their crowd but actually they love him sort of thing which i think won't happen because brendan's a lost cause a lost case a lost cause and he's too thin skin and clearly doesn't necessarily understand comedy like like they do the way they think he does so i think it will end in a tragedy but I get the feeling that Luis J. Gomez is really desperate. He's super frantic. He's seeing what's happening over there in Austin. He wants to get on the mothership. He wants to be around there and be connected and be accepted. But for whatever reason, Rogan does not like him. And it's very personal. It could be because he doesn't think he's funny. Maybe. Because we already see what Rogan said about how he finds it hard you know how it's difficult sometimes if you like somebody if you don't find them funny so it could be that he's a comedy purist and rogue just doesn't like luis j gomez brand of stand-up but i've got a feeling it's actually do it's actually a personal thing but it's funny that rogan said oh he's honest and likes to be straight up with people but luis j gomez clearly doesn't know why rogan doesn't like him hence why he's trying to do this whole brendan angle so this is them trying to explain why they think the whole brendan thing will work and trying to maybe just suck up to them 
it's basically suck up to Brian, Brendan and Brian. It's really, really bizarre, to be fair. And it doesn't make any sense. And it's kind of desperate and kind of lame. But hey, these are stand up comedians at the end of the day. Um, can we talk real quick about. Uh... So do you guys, I, Jay, I know you're doing Fighter and the Kid next week Yeah, when you're in L.A. And I put out yes, a thing. I, I was like, would people want to see a Legion of Skanks Fighter and the Kid crossover? Mm-hmm. Because um, I spoke to Callan, then ended up just randomly speaking to Brendan Schaub. And uh, How I randomly? put it out. Um, he reached out to me about something. Oh, nice. Yeah. And he just, uh, he wanted to, whatever, he wanted to pick my brain about something. And then. Um, because I guess Bert was like, "Yeah, you should link up with this guy." Like, you know, he doesn't hate you, because yeah, I guess Brendan Shaw thought that I hated him, um, and I do. No, I don't. I don't hate him. Obviously, <laughs> I don't. You know, I don't know the guy. You know, I had never had anything really against the guy, but I put it out there because I talked to Callan and Shaw. But I was like, "Look, we should do a fucking podcast, and you know, just do Legion of Skanks, Fighter and the Kid, bust each other's balls." You know, I I, I would without a doubt. You know, we'd fucking. I think we could have a funny show and fuck around and make it an enjoyable podcast. You know what I'm saying? Even though I think our fan base doesn't necessarily fucking love him, I think our fan base is very open minded. Similarly to how when we brought Whitney on, she just I came in a and fucked times. around. There, there, these people are. Everyone's is a character <clears throat> in a show in some weird way to them. Do you know what I mean? I don't think anyone has any personal issue with Brendan Shaw. Why would? You know what I mean? Well, I think I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I'm not saying nobody does. I'm just saying like I don't know, like. So what are you saying then? If you don't say nobody does, what are you saying? Say something. Stand on it. Come on, come on. Don't be scared. Rogan's not in the room. I don't know him well enough to have like sort of personal issues. All I know is I put this nice. out there, and I've gotten a. De- it's not even a decent amount of pushback. I think, like I said, it's not even our audience. His really? audience, his audience is like, oh, dude, the fucking Legion of Skanks are gonna just fucking cuck out like they did it with Callan, and they're gonna fucking be nice to the guy and fucking. Uh, Lewis is just trying to do this to get back in with Joe Rogan. And I am. Um, but all these like shots. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, if you hear this, just know that we're cool now now uh yeah i just uh, i'm curious right what's wrong with these stand-ups why are they so why are they such pussies like it's not that big of a deal really like the only bigger the only reason why people make this a big deal from what i can understand is that for the longest time lewis j gomez has been always kind of sniping you know doing little saying little things to kind of carry the favor of the homeless cats and stuff taking the piss out of Brendan, taking the piss out of Brian, taking the piss out of Chris and the whole LA comedy scene. And it's them, to be honest, who've kind of made it us be them. They're the ones who've kind of made it us be them. Nobody else. Nobody else. So when you then see them, you know, trying to flip in, um, get these guys back on their side again, it just seems a bit weird. Like, weren't you just the other day going on as if like, New York are the only ones who has all the real comics, and the guys over there are just jokes. They're just influencers. They're marketing. Like you, you throw out all these weird, you know, narratives. As Brendan would say, and you make it seem as if it's like us v them. And then when the fans kind of buy into it, and then kind of call you out for your hypocrisy, you then start crying and complaining about it. Also, two of your friends, Dave Smith and Big Jacobson, are clearly in Joe Rogan's good books but you're not. Why not just ask them to ask Joe what his issue with you is? But guess what? He won't do that. They're all pussies. Joe Rogan's too scary and they're too intimidated by him. They don't want to fuck up their links. So he would never ask them because he knows how important Joe's been to their career. So he kind of, you know, doesn't want to ask and they would never ask Joe on behalf of him because they know it could fuck up their relationship with Joe also. So they just protect their relationships individually and they just all pretend like they don't know what's going on. Why don't you ask the guy himself so they don't have to do this nonsense trying to flip in, you know, get flipping Brendan on board to kind of be their friend so that they can get back into the favor of Joe again. It's so weird. All a bit strange. It's so bizarre. And also, why does it matter now that one guy in the scene doesn't like you? It's only Joe Rogan. You guys kept telling us that, oh, Netflix doesn't matter. You can put your specials up on YouTube podcasting is the best the comedy store's never been better comedy industry's never been better murderers beasts 
you know, only 1,000 of you guys. Why should it matter that one guy doesn't like you? So what? He doesn't like you. It is what it is. Keep it moving. Sucking off Brendan isn't going to flip and revive that relationship. If anything, it's going to make it worse. Am, are we am i supposed to automatically fucking just hate a dude and be shitty to a dude be you were shitty to him your entire time that you're doing real last what's that raps he does right real last podcast the legion of skanks there's it's probably a compilation someone could put together of the times that louis J. gomez has taken unprovoked shots at brendan like why is he trying to inv why is he trying to make it seem like people are inventing this this whole narrative that he's been leaning into the meme and sniping at Brendan. He's been doing it himself without any encouragement. Unprovoked. It is what it is. Isn't that more fucking cucking out? Just me, me, you know, have there's a, a his, if I wanted to fucking pander to this, his subreddit, I could just take shots at Brendan Shaw every fucking chance I could get. Wait, you I'm know. confused on what you're saying. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm a little bit lost too. His uh, subreddit wants you're to say, take you're shots saying at his, him? You're saying his people <laughs> don't. I love because Dave talks a lot, but I love whenever Rogan's names comes up or those kind of guys. He knows how to protect his links. Dave Smith knows where his butter's bread is, mate. Think it's lame. His fans think it's lame for his us fans to think do it's it. lame for us to bring him onto our podcast unless we bring him onto our podcast to specifically try to fist fight him or ruin his life. No, no, no. It's just lame because you took shots at him. You made him seem like he was unfunny. You didn't understand how you got there. All these kind of jibes that you threw out there. Then to suddenly turn around and start to trying to be his friend again. That's some LA shit, actually. That's some LA shit. That's truly LA shit that they're doing now, to be honest. They take the piss out of LA guys, but that is some LA shit. Talk shit about somebody to their face or behind their back, sorry. And then use them for clicks and views after the fact. Well, let's why definitely his, not why do his them. fans want that? How is that his fans? Oh, I'm, I guess when I say his fans, I mean the people. I can consider them all the same thing. The people that are on the the fighter and the kids subreddit, the people that hate him, they're oh, hate okay. fans. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, yes, okay, that's okay, a good okay, way to put okay. it. The hate. They're like okay. hate fans. Like what? what you, they if they can if they click on the content, technically they're a part of that system. You're technically paying him if you watch his shit and you click on his shit. I you know I'm not even saying that that the that it would happen a fighter and the kid Legion of Skanks crossover, but. If I if we brought well, somebody on shitty to him, yeah, I'm not bringing anybody on the show yeah. to be shit unless it was like it was set up. I would never shang. I would never shanghai somebody to be shitty. Yeah. I would. I would if if you're gonna have some have it out with somebody on the thing, and that's kind of like the idea. But like, yeah, to side swipe. I remember that was funny. Like, first of all, I think we asked Brian Callen some pretty. Uh, he answered some pretty good questions on that lie detector test. Yeah, but like again, we're not gonna have him on to fuck him over. It's just like right. Yeah. Why would anybody do the show ever? Yeah, it's well, like, yeah, it's just a shitty thing to do. I don't know. I'm not trying to like if we're if we're busting someone's balls, it's always with the spirit of like this is funny. We're all gonna laugh about it. It's. <laughs> I love how they're trying to re reinvent history and rewrite history. I can't even bother to get up clips and stuff, but the amount of stuff that they've said indirectly and directly about those guys, and now they're trying to like retcon it all, is legitimately hilarious. What well, absolute losers. These are all grown ups. Who cares if Rogan doesn't like you? Honestly. It's disappointing. It's sad. Of course, he's a male Oprah. I get it. But it is what it is. Just kind of chalk it up to the game and keep it moving. If anything, Lewis J. Gomez will probably get further, just stop talking about Brendan completely and just focus on his stand up. Maybe that might get him into Rogan's good graces. He might be like, oh, you know what? You're undeniable. Even I don't like you because you, you hate my friend. I have to kind of have you on. But this kind of angling and this kind of, you know, weird shit he's doing is just a bit lame to be fair but again no surprise these stand-ups are not you know i mean they're not all there in, in the old noggin it's not then, like we're gonna get it's him. also they're like uh, the they're like oh you know they're trying to clout chase by bringing them onto the show it's like oh, yes I, um, I don't know if it clout chase is like i think it does probably more negative than positive uh, i'm like, trying to it, promote a special <laughs> no i know i know you are but i'm like, saying them bringing them onto this show chase? specifically but anytime you have somebody on a show otherwise i would have literally fucking no-name comedians non yeah, like, and we do that as well i i you know obviously you want people to watch the show i think people would be interested in watching the fighter and the kid on legion of skanks i think it'd be i think it'd be fun also i think it, there could be some fun interesting tense moments because obviously we're going to bring up things like the subreddit obviously we're going to bring up things like fucking the shit with andy letterman we we could have a fun conversation about it though i think but it's not about 
I would never bring somebody on to be like, well, dude, let me set this guy up to look like an absolute fucking fool. Dave Smith's like, I'm not bringing shit up, mate. I know my bread's buttered. I like that Rogan invites me onto his podcast to talk politics and he expects my, and he respects my opinion and likes my flipping comedy. I'm not bringing up shit. <laughs> well, that's happened on our show before. It could very well happen with literally anybody that comes on our show. If there's not the right vibe and whatever is said, sometimes shit gets heated, right? Um, but I, that's literally never been the am intent. I once if ever. I don't bring up, am I a cuck if I don't bring up the Annie Letterman thing? Because I'm not. Dude, if you go on his podcast and you cuck out and you don't fucking smack Brendan Schaub directly in his face and okay. say this is this is for the fucking skanks, it's no big deal, dude. Well, Just fight him. Fucking put my wiener in a cage, dude, and have my girl start sucking cocks because <laughs> <laughs> you're a real fucking cuckarooski. <laughs> no, dude, obviously, you're such, a not, dude. you're such a cuck for not coming hard at that trained fighter. <laughs> no, it's not even coming. Forget even a trained fighter. Like if it's not even no, a fighter, I know. Uh, you know, it's, it's not about fighting. It's what's just the about, point? The thing, I, don't, I, I don't. I don't. We. Don't, I have no issue with them. There are people I that like, I don't I, like. That I, if issue. I was on a podcast with them, I wouldn't go at them because, yes, like, I what's it, the the most important thing for me isn't simply to get fucking drama kicked up and dust kicked up. I want to have a fun, interesting show. Um, the drama happens naturally. So here's the thing about podcasting, especially when you do it for 12, 15 hours a week, like a lot of us do, right? The drama will inherently happen. I know he's be said this anyway, but he sounds so frantic. He sounds so fucking frantic, so desperate. Like, it's just hilarious, man. These guys are legitimately hilarious. They're having, like, an existential crisis or, you know, Louis J is, really, because he's realizing now that he might have fucked himself for taking, you know, those jibes and those snipes at Brendan back when Rogan was still his best friend. And now, because Rogan, even though he probably doesn't rate Brendan's stand-up and then probably not as close as they once were, he's still loyal. And maybe he met him one time, Louis J, at that kind of Legion of Skanks, you know, podcast thing. He didn't like his vibe. And he was like, you know what? Fuck this guy. He gave him a chance. He brought them all on together. And he wanted to see what if he clicked. And he just didn't like, he just didn't like the cut of flipping Louis J Gomez's jib. And for whatever reason, he can't accept it. And he's still trying to rescue it some way and hoping that Brendan could be the person to save him. That's the last person I'll be trying to bank on to get me back in Joe Rogan's good graces personally. But I also wouldn't do this. It's, you know, like, well, why would you do this? Like, you're putting way too much importance on one person, to be fair. Especially since they keep telling us that, you know, there is no gatekeepers anymore. People can't decide your future anymore. It's all in your hands. But here they are, like, acting as if flipping, you know, Rogan's a messiah. Like, relax. He just doesn't like you. It happens all the time. You will see an argument between me and Jay or Dave or a guest that comes on here. It, it, there'll be a, a fight at a comedy club or some chick will come at us online and that's going to happen for us to try to make it happen. I think is the fucking lamest shit in the world. And there are people that do that. And those are the cloud chasers. There are people, if you're, if you're just following this shit, just to post about it and comment on it. And you're just looking for that drama that's chasing cloud. That's called cope. That's called cope. That's called moving the goalposts. <laughs> ah, he's, it's your fault you made this bed now lie in it mate you took swipes at the guy joe didn't like it he stood by his friend he thinks he doesn't like you that much it is what it is don't now start blaming other people <laughs> or pointing fingers and say you guys do it too it's like grow up like I go into that hoping, which I'm sure it is, but I go into that thing being like, "Hey, everything's like cool, right?" Like I don't want to, I, I don't want to sure come in like that. Yeah, no, I know they're, they're both like it got postponed last time I was there, and they were both like, you know, shit, man, sorry it didn't work out. Like they're, it's yeah, I mean, it's I don't. It would think be manufactured. Not... It would be manufactured gripe. The... Also, Luis J Gomez lacks a lot of self awareness because I don't watch a lot of his content, but I've watched enough of it to know that he does strike me as the kind of guy who a lot of people in the friendships group would like dislike you know what i mean you know those kind of friends you have in friendship groups where this guy is a friend of that person but isn't a friend of the other person in the group like he seems to be he's one of those kind of characters where he'd have friends and people he doesn't like in the same friendship group but they have to all get along because they're all friends but you can't leave them alone together because they will get into an argument or some shit He's got, you know, he's not the most likable person anyway. So I'm surprised why he's surprised why someone like a Rogan wouldn't like him. The problem is, the reality is, like, I don't know. 
uh, on a personal level if there's any kind of oh and the funny thing is would it be so funny also if this has nothing to do with brendan maybe it's just joe met him a couple of times heard about him and just said nah not for me next that will be even more hilarious joe doesn't even care he hasn't even seen what he said about brendan and he just doesn't like him <laughs> but his two friends are too scared to ask rogan themselves because they've just got you know flipping invited into the inner circle they don't want to fuck up their shit and him being a good friend he doesn't want to ask his friends to put their relationship with the male oprah on the line either so he's left here frantically trying to make up a plan to conjure up some sort of thing it's rogan look at me look at me i'm a good guy i'm a good guy i had brendan on look 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 kind of like a, a thing at all it's like it's more like we've definitely laughed at you know, we laughed at fucking. <laughs> we kicked apology. him in while he was down. <laughs> We've laughed at things. <laughs> I mean, people. <laughs> but it's not a. Oh yeah, true, Josie Masters. Yeah, um, Louis J. Gomez. Yeah, true, Josie. Good point. He's made loads of jokes about Rogan's height. He always does. Him and flipping the the the, the, the masters of taking the piss out of Rogan's height. Him and uh, Brian Campbell from flipping um from Luke Thomas's show. They always do it. So it wouldn't surprise me if Rogan seen a couple of those clips and thought, get fucked. So this probably has nothing to do with Brendan. That's a funny thing. He's desperate to get Brendan on board, but this has nothing to do with Brendan. I love it. Direct thing with the person. You know what we should do? Here's the, I think the only way to make this work is if Brendan Schaub comes on our podcast, if we review Gringo Poppy in real time and tell him what's wrong with it. That's a fair fucking compromise for everybody involved. We're just going to ignore the first one? Look at Dave Smith. Just quiet. Kidding. We'll give him a <laughs> <laughs> Got that out. <laughs> Dave Smith knows where his bread is buttered. Look how quiet he is. He's never this quiet. <laughs> and it, <laughs> and it, it's funny. He goes, and we'll tell what's wrong with Gringo Poppy. He goes, we're just going to ignore that first special. Okay. <laughs> that one's too far gone. Can't change that or fix that one. Oh, fuck, dude. Um, anyways, I don't give a fuck. Um, you know, Maybe it works out for them. Maybe it doesn't work out for them. It's kind of pathetic what they're trying to do anyway. It's beyond clout chasing. Um, it's it's spineless. Um, it's kind of giving cuck. Uh, it reeks of desperation. It's lame. It's corny. Not not in it at all. Um, I might have to, what you call it? Go by now. Also, snap pack. Can you check this video out? Necro forensic pathology. Oh, I'll, I'll check that out another time, my friend. Not today. I'm gonna end it right now. But let me add it to the list. Snack pack extravaganza. Thank you for suggestion. I'm gonna actually copy it now and put it in my notes. But I have to bounce because it's already it's six a.m. here in London, and I know it's a bank holiday weekend. But I have to get some sleep, so I'm gonna put this in my notes for next time. Thank you for letting me know. Actually, random show ninety eight. Yeah, thank you for letting me know uh, to do, and I'll put down my list. So, guys and gals, it is the end for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. Apologize for the copyright strike takedowns. Don't blame me. Blame Matt Rife and his, you know. Um, interesting comedy special i still maintain as the poll saying down below that brendan Shaw is better than matt rife i would die on that hill gladly um but it is what it is if you disagree thank you but thank you so much for you guys tuning in with me here once again please make sure that you smash that like button down below if you enjoy the show that'd be greatly appreciated please get those likes up there for me if you enjoyed it um and i'll see you guys again probably sometime during the weekend maybe i'll do a little ufc um live stream uh watch along type of thing they're usually not the best because i'm usually kind of you know gripped watching the show but we'll see how that goes if not i'll probably see you guys later but yeah man i enjoyed it had a great time hope you guys had a good time also um if you want to join the discord little community we got on there make sure you click the link in the description also there's a link there to the discord if that link is broken let me know and i'll update it um, I'll add the timestamps tomorrow so you can check that out as well, the two parts. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon, man. But thank you for tuning in with me. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll see you all again very, very, very soon. Very, 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 very soon.